This is the smell of the leftover tuna fish sandwich you left in your lunchbox over the weekend in a wimpy trash bag. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy! Blech! And this is the smell of that same sandwich in a hefty, ultra-strong trash bag. Hefty, hefty, hefty! Ah, <sighs> smell the difference? Hefty Ultra Strong has Arm & Hammer with continuous odor control, so no matter what's inside your trash... Hmm. You can stay one step ahead of Stinky. And for bigger jobs, try the superior strength of hefty large black bags. Whether you're looking to build a website for your business, your hobby, your podcast, or just for fun, Pear Networks is your go-to web hosting partner. Not only do we have the lowest domain price in the industry, starting at just 11 bucks, we've got hundreds of stunning website templates to help you stand out from the crowd. You're not a techie? Not a problem. With our easy DIY site builders, you can launch your impressive website without any technical know-how. And when it comes to security and updates, don't worry, we've got you covered. Our 24-7 U.S.-based customer support is the best in the industry. Check out Pair.com today to learn more. P-A-I-R dot com. All right, before we get into today's episode, just uh, take care of a little business here. If you need parts for your old motorcycle or your new motorcycle, or if you need riding gear, you need to check out oldbikebarn.com. On Instagram at oldbikebarn, uh, on the web at oldbikebarn.com. Um, check them out. They got... Um, Whatever you need for your cafe racer, your chopper, your stock bike, uh, especially for your old Japanese bike. If you can't find some shit, uh, go there first, oldbikebond.com. If you uh, need a CBD oil and you don't know where to stop because they're all over the place now, you need to check out cradlelakeclear.com, made from the best ingredients uh, through the most thorough process. And uh, you got problems sleeping or you got problems w- with inflammation or muscle aches and whatnot, Need to check out cradlelakeclear.com. Fucking best uh, best CBD oil I've tried. You got problems sleeping? I sleep like a baby if I take that shit. I, I can't even take it sometimes because I sleep too deep. So uh, check them out, cradlelakeclear.com. If you use the promo code Big Truth at checkout, you get 20% off your order. Um, you got a fucking <laughs> dirty thing. I wish Ryan was here to fucking <laughs> do one of these with me because he always <laughs> had a funny one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you got a fucking filthy, fucking hairy, fucking fungal Dingus, then you need to check out manscaped.com, especially in the swampy summer. Um, they got a, 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 a fucking ball razor, basically, called the Lawnmower 3.0. Clean up your junk. No one wants to deal with it down there. Check out manscaped.com uh, and uh, use the promo code Big Truth at checkout. You get 20% off your order and free shipping. Uh, if you happen to be in the unfortunate situation where you find yourself in a motorcycle accident, check out lawtigers.com. Uh, they will hook you up. They're a law firm that was founded by riders for riders, and they specialize in motorcycle accidents. So they will know what to do. If you uh, go to Facebook.com and uh, type in Law Tigers in your state, uh, you will get in touch with the local office. So check out LawTigers.com. Uh, you're looking for any clothing this summer, you need to check out Amerta uh, at AmertaMia.com. Uh, on uh, Instagram at Amerta Mia, O-M-E-R-T-A-M-I-A. Shane's looking it up right now, sitting here on my side. Um, but yeah, check them out, and you get 20% off your order there, whether you need a hoodie or, if, I mean, you don't know, unless you live in fucking Juneau, Alaska, you probably don't need a hoodie right now. But uh, uh, fall's coming, right? And uh, and But if you need a T-shirt, tank tops, fucking, you know, whatever you need, go check them out. Best streetwear brand in the biz. Um and uh, if you're still looking for more clothes, check out Pitchfork at PitchforkNY.com, uh, on Instagram at PitchforkNY. And they also put out uh, music that you will like. So uh, check out. They actually got a new New York Hardcore uh, compilation LP. So check them out at PitchforkNY.com. Um, let me see here. I don't want to forget anyone. If you are looking for more uh, info on motorcycle events or uh, if you're into just riding bikes or fixing bikes or whatever, you need to check out Chop Cult. At chopcult.com. Uh, they are the biggest information clearinghouse and message board set up for uh, motorcycling. Uh, they also have an online swap meet where you can buy, sell, and trade parts. And they have an online uh, uh, events uh, page where you can find out about local uh, motorcycle events for you. Um, heavy, if you're into weird shit, arcane shit, occult shit, fucking serial killers, uh, just bad stuff, choppers, boogie vans, 70s show vans. Drugs, cult stuff, Christian smiling, Christian's meandering over as I say all this. Uh, you need to check out Heavy at uh, heavy.bigcartel.com. Uh, my man Zach Dune's got uh, clothing and uh, nefarious wares for you over there. So check out Heavy at uh, heavycartel.com. Or, um, and uh, on Instagram, it's Heavy Clothing. Um, 
yeah, last but not least, check out chopahead.com if you want to uh, support my shop. Uh, we have a... Uh, we're a full brick and mortar, full service motorcycle shop. So if you're in New England and you need something done on your bike, give us a call. Whether it's an oil change or you want a full custom chopper built. Uh, if you need parts, we can send you parts. If you need clothing, we got clothing and riding gear and all that stuff. Check us out, chopahead.com. On Instagram at chopahead. Last but not least, for more information on the podcast itself, check out bigtruthpodcast.com. And if you really want to support the show, go to patreon.com slash big truth. And there's ways for you to be able to financially support the show. And they all come with their own uh, benefits and uh, special things. So check it out. Patreon.com slash big truth. And uh, we're going to get into this right now. Yeah, once again, we got lift off. We want to thank you for uh, tuning in this episode of the Big Truth Podcast. This is a weird one. It's uh, it's one we don't want to do, but uh, we're paying homage to our boy Ryan. I and Ryan, um, Rio, uh, some of you guys know him. He was on uh, our Roundtable podcast as a permanent guest, as a, one of the permanent hosts of that. But beyond that, he was my best friend of 39 years. Um, he passed away a couple weeks ago. And uh, so we're here to pay homage to him today. We've got a full house. We're at the tattoo shop, uh, Atomic Inc. in Swansea, Mass., that uh, Ryan was probably the second owner of. Um, he bought it about 20 years ago or some shit. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, but, uh, yeah, this is one stuff. I want to stumble through this, so you motherfuckers, if you don't know Ryan, you don't care, whatever, just fucking fast forward. If you want to hear some funny shit, some funny shit's going to be coming up. I got uh, my boy Shane here from with me, uh, uh, who was uh, co-hosting tonight. Shane was a friend of uh, me and Ryan since high school. Uh, we got uh, our boy Jim, who was also part of the old uh, Fall River, New Bedford, uh, Providence, hardcore scenes, uh, who, who we've known for, for decades as well. Uh, Christian rode with us, rides with us in HF, who was a longtime friend of Ryan, the same, same with Pat. And uh, Dan, who uh, here, is here working with us at the tattoo shop, who uh, works side by side with me and Ryan for six years now. And uh, we got some dudes going to come in on the phone and all this stuff. And uh, I guess the main thing tonight is we're just going to kind of pay homage and, and honor our friend who fell uh, too early in life and uh, talk about good times and funny shit and good memories uh, just to uh, preserve this. You know what I mean? Because sometimes people pass and you remember it. And then as time goes on, things, you know, whatever, um, you know, this dude's too important in our lives to to uh, forget and have something here for his kid to listen to and uh, uh, for us to go back and, uh, and listen to and remember good times, man. 39 years of building memories. Uh, we met in sixth grade, and in sixth grade, that's when it, it shit started pretty much right away. Um, uh, detention in sixth grade was called the After School Club, and basically uh, pretty much a month or two into it, it was changed to uh, Josh Gagne's After School Club, and because I was on permanent detention from sixth grade, and uh, and Ryan was pretty much there, almost with me, pretty much almost every day. Uh, the teacher's name was Mr. Siegel, and uh, he used to make us go watch basketball. And this motherfucker had a comb over, and he'd play basketball, and it would flap like a seagull wing. <laughs> it would be like seagull, seagull. Ah, and we would try to make noises and shit, but, but, um, so the, the funny thing is I have vi vivid memories of Ryan in sixth grade. He had, I was jealous. Uh, this is nothing to be jealous of, but actually it is. He had both the beat it and the thriller Michael Jackson jackets. <laughs> 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 Why did I never know that? Well, because you, you didn't know us in sixth grade. You didn't know, you didn't know us <laughs> to high school, and he had uh, and he would wear gray parachute pants. The not the not the shiny kind. Well, the multiple multiple pockets, the ones that you zip down, and when you zip them down, they were a different color inside, and they were gray with aqua inside, and uh, yeah, it was just this is pre punk rock. This is like a little bit before we got into punk and hardcore, and we were listening to. Uh, we were listening to metal and hip hop, and uh, and uh, 
yeah, but you know that started our our a uh, lifelong journey of of idiocy and and, uh, and friendship, like because we bonded right away in sixth grade, causing trouble. And 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 pretty much, I told this story at the wake the other day when uh, we went to different high schools the first year, and uh, I went to the New Bedford uh, Volk Tech High School, and he went to um, Dartmouth High, and uh, at some point he decided to transfer over. This is. Before you started, right? Yeah, before. Yeah, before you started, yeah. And um, we had, like, me and uh, this guy, Kevin DuPont, um, had caused so much trouble in that school that um, the the New Bedford Vogue Tech High School was set up in a way where you, um, the freshmen were in school, were in classes with the juniors, uh, and the sophomores were in the same cycle as the seniors. And um, you'd go two weeks to shop, two weeks to class uh, to do regular academic stuff. It was barely academic at Vogue Tech in the, uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, 86 to 90. Um, I think I had homework once or twice, maybe the whole time. I had a homework book. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, the, so when they found out, because Ryan was coming into our shop, which was Graphic Arts, um, and, you know, we were all under the ruse because we thought it was going to be more like graphic design, but it was really running outdated fucking 1800s printing presses. Um, and, and the, uh, when, when the, you had your, you had your two shop teachers and then you had the, I forgot what he was called. What was the guy? Mr. Shop supervisor. The supervisor who would be the supervisor for like four yeah, shops. Yeah, my shop, your shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think his name was Mr. Yearly. Yep. Right? Yeah. Got that little, uh. His little time, yeah. yeah. So when Yili found out that me and Ryan knew each other, they made a whole separate, a whole separate cycle just for him. He was the only one on that cycle because they just didn't want us in the same part of the school at the same time ever. So they did whatever they could to make sure we weren't in the in the same part of the school. But you know, um, and that's just speaks what kind of dumb shit we had going on. You know what I mean? And 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 Vogue Tech was just. It was a fucking hard place, man, and it was fucking crazy back then. Like, my first day of school, I remember I, I got off the bus, and uh, the first thing I saw is I got off the bus. It was like walking into prison almost because you get off and you, you walk in. And uh, the first thing I saw, this, this Puerto Rican cat had this other dude against the wall, and he had a comb, and he was trying to gouge the kid's eyes out with the comb. Like, he had him against the wall. Like, his fo <laughs> like he had him in an arm bar. Like, his arm, like, like had the, against the dude's neck, and he was just trying to gouge his eye out. And I was like... All right, dude. Here we go, and uh, it's pretty and, uh, badass though. No, it was pretty funny because it was still wild when you were there, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, when when uh, Mike uh, H, we won't say full names, would hang people off the third floor because it was three floors and shit. Uh, it was wild times, and uh, they didn't they didn't want me and Ryan in the same place because they knew it was going to be like real bad at that point. Um, but yeah, man, it was fun shit. But you know, Ryan was my boy since then, man. Like you know, like since elementary, like. Uh, actually first year of middle school um like we found punk rock together we went to the first shows together um we before punk rock we went to shows together we saw motley crew on the shout at the devil tour um but uh at the uh it was at the orpheum in boston but uh yeah we the first punk rock show it was me him and dupont went to suicidal tendencies and jerry's kids i was like 85 or 86 and then fucking uh from there it was like a lifelong thing man we'd be like every weekend i'd stay at his house or he'd stay at mine like shows would come up we'd be like so fucking stoked like couldn't even sleep the night before like oh shit gnostic front youth of today's tomorrow can't be all excited and shit or him making fun of misfits uh legacy brutality american nightmare he'd like dance around like elvis and shit like fucking you know what i mean like to that song and like and like lip sync it and do dumb shit and um i don't know man like what you know, from your standpoint, meeting us because you were a year younger, right, or two, two years younger. Yeah, so you you so weren't you weren't on the cycle. Were you on the cycle with me? I was on the cycle with you. I was a freshman. You were a junior. Okay, so I met you guys in '88. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know, like, fuck, dude. Like, uh, I'm just trying to set the stage for context of how long yeah. we all known each other. Fucking, you know what I mean? Because it's that's like you know, back then, late yeah. '80s. Like, I, I was like a little little skate rat going into high school. Just found punk rock, hardcore, Sex Pistols, a little minor threat, Dead Kennedys. I'm like, oh, this whole new world's all crazy. The starter kit, yeah. Yeah, then I meet you guys, and you guys are, uh, 
You guys were something, man. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't like the regular kids I was hanging out with, like the regular skaters and stuff. You know, like you were like them, but like like on steroids, you know. <laughs> and uh, not literally, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you guys like you know were really really instrumental in like me like you know finding like really like discovering truly what hardcore was, the scene and stuff, and like you know all the awesome stuff that was going out and, and coming out and stuff like. Like, you guys, like, would tape stuff for me. I got, like, tapes at home, like, still, like, that Ryan made for me. But, like, Wide Awake and Jerry's Kids and, like, the first Sick of It All 7-inch. And that was, yeah. like, how I got to, like, hear all that stuff. It was, it was pretty amazing. And, uh, yeah, uh, the, the best thing about you guys that was, like, the, the, the craziest, I guess, was uh, being, like, a, a young little skate rat. You know, you're getting fucked with everywhere you go. Like, you know, you, you know, where you skate, cars pull up, people fuck with you. It didn't matter who it was. People just, like, fucked with you. And you just, like... You know, you just took it, like, you know, all you all got off, you just skated off and went somewhere. And I mean, you guys, and it was kind of like, nah, fuck you, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, and, and then it was like, there was like the tables turn, and then like Friday nights were like going out, like, just like looking up all the kids that fucked with us and fucking with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it was a whole different, uh, a whole different ball of wax, you know? And uh, yeah, it definitely brought me into what would be like the next 30 something years of my life of like, a lot of fun, man. A whole hell of a lot of fun. Like, yeah. Well, that's what it was, man. We just we wanted to have. We just went out and, and fucking had fun. But it was like mischief and fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, I, the other thing too is I remember like the old skate days and 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 this ties in with Ryan and this ties into the motorcycle element. Like, I got a moped probably in like seventh grade or some shit, and. uh Ryan didn't have one yet, so it'd be me and him riding around, like, everywhere on my moped with two, two like, we'd have two skateboards strapped to us, and uh, we'd ride down to South South Dartmouth and go hang out with, like, Babola and Lance and all them yeah. and Dan Sabino and, and, and skate with them down there. And uh, that shit was fucking hysterical. And then finally Ryan got his own, and then we, we both would bomb around, like, and, and bomb around everywhere on those fucking things. And that's, like, at a time when if you saw, like, a kid – if you see a kid now on a bike or a moped or some shit, like, buzzing around, like, because what are you in seventh grade? Like, you're, like, 12, right? Yeah, I think so. Some shit like that. Like, you don't see kids doing that type of shit anymore, you know? And, and that's just the sad thing about the world, man, just in general, not even to get off the topic, but there's no more, like, fucking wandering around and adventure shit. Like, they've, they've kind of squashed that. If you see a kid walking around, that's you know what, what I mean? Like, you're, like... Child services is fucking called, you know? One of the things that fucked me up is, like, I think about all the crazy things we did when we were younger. And even before, you might just, like, you know, I mean, yeah, elementary yeah. school, you're just, like, running around the city by yourself or whatever. And you see kids that were, like, the age when you were doing stuff. You see kids at, like, 13 years old, yeah. and you're, like, how were we out there, like, causing freaking havoc and chaos yeah. at that age, you know? It's, it's, it's a different world now. Well, I see, like, Ryden, who's 17, right? And it's, like, Ryan's son. And, and... And I think about, like, damn, dude, like, when we were that age, like, we were going to New York and going to shows and shit and, like, or going all over the place to go to fucking shows. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, there was something else I was going to say, too, and I just totally fucking blanked out. But what's, what, like, so, I mean, you know Ryan a lot of years, and I, I did, too, so it's going to be hard. And then as other people come in, we'll be able to bounce it. But, like, what's, like, one of your favorite – oh, when I was talking about – when you were talking about, like, us turning the tables, like – and I remember that. Like, there was one day we were there. We were skating, and some dudes drove by with, like, fags or whatever. And uh, Dan Sabino smashed the dude <laughs> with his board, like, in the truck and, like, just blew this dude's face open. And then, uh, and then that was probably one of the turning points, but then, like – some favorite memories of the thing you probably have Jim too involved was just stand that standing out in front of uh babyhead, um, which was, was the rocket. Then it became babyhead. Then it became club hell on a uh, Richmond street, Providence. Um, dudes would come by and they're like, I rocks with T tops and yell shit. We'd like pizza boxes on fire and stuff it inside the fucking I rock. So they'd t take away and their interiors would be on fire or, or everyone would mad ball them. Like, remember that? Like yeah. when it'd be like 10 kids, like what? <laughs> they'd, they'd, come, so they'd go by like figs or whatever. And we'd come out, everyone would have mad balls just smashing up their cars and stuff. Pre cell phone, you could get away with a lot more shit in the world than you can now. That's all I got to say. Like, you know, you could like, do anything. And all you had to do is just be out of there before the cops showed up yeah, yeah. and you were fine. Yeah. Nothing to worry about. Didn't have to think about it the next day. Nothing. Oh, that fate, that fateful night when uh, when Derek Lumina was still alive too, and uh, 
those football players were fucking around with oh, Jonesy and his and yeah. his kid and his kid brother. Blast and he and he kid. came in. He they came in. Uh, Jonesy, remember we were in the parking lot and Jonesy came around and was like, hey, "They're fucking with Corey." Blah blah blah. Yeah. This is J- Jonesy's little brother was a little kid at the time, like probably fucking twelve or something. Yeah. And we chased those fucking football players and. Lumina's. Yeah, I remember I picked up a steel post for all run out, and then there comes Derek Lumina out of nowhere, picks up a rock. But Ryan was there, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. Lumina and, picks up a rock, pitch a perfect aim. And then all I remember is Kendra Leakes is like, I look outside, and they see all you idiots beating up all, this fo- all these football players. <laughs> and we were like half this size because we were still kids. But that that was, I don't know, there was a spirit to back then, man, that, you know, I don't think, um, think you know, is as prevalent in days now and i don't know what it is whether it's times are different or people are different or whatever but you know so it's sad whenever we lose one from back then because um you know there's a, it's a different set of people man it's a different different makeup a motherfucker you know what i mean that that lasted through that shit and um and developed in that and you know, it was just a different caliber of dude. Like, K.O. always says, last of a dying breed. You know what I mean? And, and, and oh, sorry. And then, uh, you know, that's what that is. But, like, what's, if you had to pick, like, what's some of your most favorite times with Ryan or, like, memories of Ryan? It's tough to pick a favorite one. I know, I know. Like, but, you know, stand out, stand out. I don't like want to say favorite. It's been, like, you know, yeah. going crazy with, like, just memory after memory after memory. So, I, I don't want to say favorite, but... St- because obviously that's hard to say when you're friends with someone for decades, but yeah. standout but, times. But, but just to throw out a funny funny one that uh, was, I was thinking about today is uh, Christmas shopping back in, I don't know, must have been like maybe 92, 93-ish or something like that. And we used to all go Christmas shopping, get each other you know, presents. You know, Ryan in the mall, we're going Christmas shopping, and he's like, oh, I got to go to Sears uh, to get a, uh, a present. I'm like, oh, what do you get? Let's get dad something? He's like, no, no, I got to get, get a true something. I'm like, oh, what do you get? He's like, I gotta get him an axe. I'm like, an axe? I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You get him an axe? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get him an axe. And, and we're in Sears and we're looking around at axes. And I'm like, this is the worst idea ever. Like, you're really gonna get him an axe. And I, st- I still always have one by my side. Who's uh, got axes? Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, all right, go ahead. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta turn this. Go ahead. Wait, hold on. Why is that not pick? Oh, sorry, man. I had that mic off. All right. Wait, hold on. Go ahead. This is in this tattoo shop. The okay. most tattoo shops. <laughs> and I think they're all yours, true. I, I know two of mine. I don't know. Some might, some might be Ryan's and yours. Yeah, that one's mine. Yeah. <laughs> so Ryan started my axe fetish, obviously. So we're just pulling axes out and... uh <laughs> it, was, it was the most ridiculous oh, present goodness. ever. And then a couple of weeks later, there was an ITI show at, uh, at Babyhead, which, of course, you insisted on bringing into the club and putting on stage. No, dude, I used to I used to bring that axe with me everywhere. I used it as a cane. I'd keep, the, I know, I'd keep I the, 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 the blade at the bottom, and I'd walk around like I was injured. And I'd get in. I just remember I was at, like, Babyhead on, like, stupid dance party or something. And we kind of knew the, the bouncers. He's like, what are you fucking doing? You can't have that in here. And I was like, I just had it in here for the show the other day. Yeah. I just remember th- it's bad when I'm the one that's saying like I don't think that's a good idea man. Like, <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that about anything in my especially life especially back then <laughs> yeah, back yeah, then yeah. I'm like you really shouldn't be giving him an axe this is a really really bad idea <laughs> yeah I remember I, did I, I think I threw it across the stage you did yeah, yeah. they didn't want you on stage with it <laughs> you probably would have took somebody's head off yeah, yeah, well, whatever I didn't I'm an expert axe thrower um <laughs> And uh, skilled actor. Oh, for for people that don't know too, Shane operates a, uh, a screen printing company, and he's the one who screen prints all our T-shirts uh, over at Chopperhead, and does a lot of uh, does all our band merch, and um, did the merch for the for the tattoo shop and all that stuff. Um, and it's just uh, you know because we we keep it's true to that DIY thing, and we keep everything in house as much as we can, and uh, so yeah. I was, thank you for that shit. Ah, it has <laughs> been a true brotherhood, like since like the day we met, you know, and like just all through the years. It's, uh, I, I think that's what makes everything so special about you know with Ryan and all of us. And I don't think you see that that often, like, like for that many years. You people become good friends for a couple of years and stuff, but I mean, over thirty years and like, yeah, it gets oh, crazy. You know? I think about because um, you know me and Ryan was straight edge, and then he broke 
broke edge first. And I'm remembering because now that Pat came up, it just reminds me of a story. Like I was there the, the first night Ryan started drinking and he got super fucked up. He couldn't mock or he couldn't do anything. And I had the fireman carry him down like three flights of stairs at some fucking stupid party. I couldn't even tell you where the party was. But I, I think one of my favorite times with Ryan – or not favorite times. I mean, there's so much, right? It's hard to say. It's your favorite. But one of my favorite time eras is when his father gave him this big white Impala station wagon. It was such a war wagon. It was huge. It was his first car. And we <laughs> we would just go and cause so Everyone would pile in that. We'd do so much dumb shit in that thing. I can't even remember it all. But I remember there was one night that we went and it was parents neighborhood there was a girl i can't remember who it was i don't know someone used to go out with her no i know i never did but i can't remember or ryan liked her or something were you there the night we went and stole all yes. the halloween decorations yeah, from the whole on. neighborhood yeah. and then reset them up on her her yes. lawn <laughs> so it looked like like her family went and took everyone from the neighborhood's <laughs> lawn, fucking halloween decorations and set it up on their own house but we had we probably had like 75 pumpkins and we, we put them on our deck, and the family couldn't get out the next day because they were stacked so high that they were, like, pumpkined in. It wasn't, like, snowed in. They were, like, pumpkin in. They couldn't get out. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. But in so, before all that, like, dude, all the prank calls, man. Like, like you know, when we were kid kids, like, you know, like, and uh, uh, me and Ryan actually got arrested for that <laughs> once, and we got brought in, and we were, like, fucking 14 or some shit 13 no we weren't even high school we were like 13 i did too i was 19 <laughs> yeah 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 but like we got we got arrested for that i remember that and i remember the worst thing they could have done was um they brought us in to the deposition and we we're there with like a whatever who who does depositions it's not a it's not a judge it's a um, magistrate magistrate or something yeah. like court magistrate yeah and we're there and i'm just i'm there with my father ryan's there with his father and that this kid Jay or something was uh, not Jay Medeiros. Actually, we got a call. Um, uh, this other kid Jay, he he was a little commie punk, um, and he was the one who like we because we were making the calls at his house, and he's the one who ratted us out because he's a little fucking commie. But anyway, um, I just remember uh, they, they like the ladies like played the tape from the answer machine or some shit and it was ryan it was all ryan and and dude like literally they're playing it and we're like in this situation and there's a magistrate and like a court like guard or whatever and like us there with our fathers and like uh me and ryan you know you know when you're not supposed to laugh but you yeah. can't stop laughing we were laughing so hard when they were playing it back like you know like shrugging like crying and stuff and both our fathers just punched us in the fucking side of the head at the same time like and but you know those motherfuckers thought that shit was funny too like you know what i mean because i know my father's a jackass and so i know he thought it was funny but like you know what i mean but like uh Oh, uh, dude, I just, it's just, it's funny. If I said what the prank call was, it wouldn't make sense unless you're from this area because it yeah. had to do with Cafe Portugal <laughs> on the Ave and stuff. And, uh, and so it, it doesn't matter. But, uh, and plus it was so juvenile, like it's, it's not even funny. Half that stuff was only fun if you were there, like in the moment. But one thing we did that was a standout prank was we would go through the phone book and try and find people with stupid names. And there was literally someone in the in the phone book in the New Bedford area. Look it up, uh, you know. Look it look it up in the late eighties or whatever. <laughs> Give him a call. Yeah, there was a guy. <laughs> there was a guy. You can because you can go look at old phone books in the library. You don't have to believe me. Um, there was a dude named Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> and, the thing, and we antagonized that motherfucker like to no avail. And uh, Statue of Limitations is up on all this. He's from Lord of the Rings, a character in Lord of the Rings. Great movie. <laughs> Never seen that. Never seen that. We're not going to get into the what movies has Shane seen, um, but, but speaking of Lord of the Rings, right? Like that's one you could talk about, Jim. But uh, but um, there, so there was this other guy, and his name was Humberto Rebello, and he lived on Orchid Lane in New Bedford, Mass. And his phone number was five zero eight nine nine two four two eight six. I still remember that shit. I couldn't tell you my own phone number. I couldn't tell you anyone in this room's phone number. But I can tell you Ryan's phone number, like from when we were kids. It's another call Kevin we gotta DuPont. make later. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Humberto Rebello is probably still alive. But we spent a fucking two or three weeks just planning shit to send to his house, like for like three weeks from that day. Were you around for that? 
I think this is before I don't think you. I, I do was around that. No, I remember you talking like about a, high like school. a care package. No, 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 no. <laughs> so this is pre like credit cards weren't as popular, so you could order shit and you didn't have to pay up front or pay deposits. Oh, yeah. So like literally, we're like, hey, we're gonna have a bi- we're, we're having a big um, we'd say different thing, anniversary party or this and that. So we sent cakes, pizzas. <laughs> um, that morning we called like taxis. We sent porta johns, cement trucks. Uh, all kinds of shit. Uh, every exterminator in the book that we could find, we were like, yeah, we need it for Thursday at like four to six o'clock was the window. And then we, had, we didn't drive yet because we were too young, but we had one of our older friends bring us and we camped out and we staked out and you have never seen pandemonium like this fucking day, dude. Like we're sitting there and like pizza car, pizza delivery showing up and like cement truck, fucking a truck with Porter Johns, fucking all this bullshit showing up. And this one Portuguese guy fucking flipping out on his fucking lawn, dude. Like, I, I order none of this. I, I don't order this. Like, blah, blah, blah. Freaking out. All and, because you dude, found it his was name like mayhem on the, the fucking road, book. dude. It was like mayhem because, like, all this shit was arriving at once. And it was like people, like, it was like a scene out of a fucking movie, dude. Like, you couldn't do it now unless you, like, used a fake credit card and, or, or some bullshit. But this was so long ago, like, you didn't have to pay up front you got invoiced or paid by check when they showed up you know yeah we had uh, a, I remember we had a, a load of mulch delivered to my neighbor's driveway when they weren't home <laughs> that was fucking yeah yeah I, I don't know how they sorted it out but that thing was there for like three weeks <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so it wasn't I, I didn't think about mulch back then i don't think we mulch was on that was on that menu of of uh of, of idiocy but yeah it was good man it was good that's pat who just uh chimed in yeah um, i'm glad when i came up here i, I reminded you of drugs <laughs> <laughs> what you said i came up and to remind you of drug stories with ryan no no uh, no 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 because because you're a fireman i was like because i had to fireman carry him down three flights of stairs that's that's what reminded me i didn't say drugs <laughs> oh that's what i got from that yeah, story yeah yeah no yeah. i mean you're you're all like straight agent now so like yeah you don't, you don't remind me of drugs Cru- crucified anymore. to the x <laughs> yeah ryan's actually the one that introduced me to straight edge who ryan, ryan? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Ryan was actually Ryan was actually like, no matter what you did, he just wanted you to do it good. Like whether yeah. you were fucking up and going hard doing drugs and stuff, or being sober and fucking trying to live like life good, like he just wanted you to do it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was so supportive either way, like no matter what you were doing, you know? Yeah, if you were, if you wanted to make good choices, he was all in. If you wanted to make bad choices, he <laughs> yeah, was all in. Absolutely. <laughs> he was so positive about being positive and also or positive about being negative. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just 110 percent either way. Do Absolutely. whatever you want. Yep. Just do it 110 <laughs> percent. But yeah, I mean, and that's the that was the beautiful thing about Ryan because like when you say uh, you know someone passes, everyone remembers certain things. But every person has said I remember Ryan's laugh and just like his general demeanor. Like everybody got up and down days, and you know Ryan, I got to see a lot of the down days or the bad days too. But like. His public face, man, like, and it wasn't like a front. It was just literally once he got around people, especially his friends, it lifted him up. And so he was always stoked when he was around people because, because that's what made him happy was being around his friends. Yeah, you know what I mean? So lovable dude and like love, yeah, just yeah. love being around people. And even like when he kidnapped people, they developed co- <laughs> stock, they developed Stockholm syndrome apparently and <laughs> yeah. fell in love with them. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> I, I, R- Roddy couldn't be on the phone, couldn't be here, be on the phone because he's he's uh, traveling today. But uh, that was a story. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't turn around. I don't know how that went over at the wake, but um, there was a kid we knew that we went to high school with with me and Shane and Ryan, uh, named Ronnie, um, who owns a a, a well known tattoo shop out here um, in Providence. Um, somewhere along his way, his name went from Ronnie DaCosta to to Ronald Wells, and he, he got he got he got mature somewhere along the way. No, but <laughs> and for us, it was rap boy. Uh, but um, but. <laughs> He's awesome, dude. I'm just fucking around. Like we'll bust balls to the to the bitter end with, that, with especially with old friends. But um, he was a he was a diehard Cure fan, and uh, that didn't go well for him at Vogue Tech sometimes. <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know we would fuck with him, but we'd also look out for the dude. You know what I mean? Like like we'd there was that was one of the things. Like we'd fuck with a lot of people, but like in a friendly way, like fun ball busting way. Yeah, we wouldn't really fuck with him. Like, you know, yeah. like, we'd always get in a lot of fights in high school, but it was a lot of times it was like the dudes fucking with like the retards, and we'd be like, "No, no, no you don't fuck with them." Yeah, <laughs> you know. And I don't want to say it 
whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's not a positive <laughs> word, but they were our retards. So, like, you know, you don't fuck with that guy. You know what I mean? And we'd fuck, we'd fuck with them, but in a way, like, where it was fun for them, like, everyone wants you, you know, like, people know you get your balls busted. It's, it's in good faith. Like, a lot of them dudes either got tiptoed around or got really fucked with. We'd fuck with them in a fun way, like, like I'd fuck with you. So they appreciated it. They'd, right. be, like, they'd be all stoked, like, because they were, like, part of the, the, the gang. You know what I mean? And we looked out for them. But, and that, that was another thing, like, Ryan, like, you know, me and him got in a lot of fights with, like, just fucking jock or guido type dudes that vote guys, because they'd fuck around with those dudes. Start in the fights. Yeah, and we'd, and we'd stick up for them. And we'd fuck with them, too, but, like, but in fun, you know? That's what I'm trying to say. But, um, I don't know. Ryan knows the end of thing. You know, one for the underdogs type thing, you know? Uh, but, yeah, man, he's a good dude, man. Like, you know, it's... Back to his That's impala. It. I remember one of the first days he got it driving to a show in Babyhead. There was a line of people out front. <laughs> he went up over the curb. He almost wiped out the half oh, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we went to see uh, Raw Deal. Because uh, I think they were still called Raw Deal. I don't think they were called Killing Time yet. To Providence. I think I told this one. And I think we had 14 people in that thing. It was a shit ton of people. 14, it was either 12 or 14. I can't remember. And... uh but we were driving on the highway and Jay Barrett was riding on the standing up, riding on the bumper, holding holding the top like half the way to like down like, the highway. Like the roof rack. Yeah. Yeah, holding <laughs> yeah. on to the roof rack. Yeah. <laughs> that thing it was it was a big white Impala station wagon, like a late seventies, early eighties station wagon. And it had ballroom dancers. It was an old ladies or an old couples uh, before you know, who owned it before. And they had ballroom dancers engraved in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> so it was such a jerk off car, like, because it was a big white car, like, all these idiots in it, and it's got, like, ballroom dancers and, like, music notes and, like, you know, dumb things, like, his, all engraved his, on the glass. His dad was saying how it had no brakes when he no, took it to no, the no. thing. <laughs> that Ryan was not one for, 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 for general maintenance of vehicles. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. That would probably explain why he almost wiped everyone out that day if there's no brakes in it. Dude, do you remember that little red... Um, uh, escort. The red escort he yeah. had, that had some sensor in it. This is the this is one of the best like Ryan meltdown stories. We were on Thayer Street, and he got a fight with his whoever his chick was at the time, and he was you know doing the punch in the roof thing. Yeah, yeah, we all yelled. Go. He got out of the car <laughs> and he and he yelled something and he slammed the door, but he slammed the door so hard it like tripped like some sensor that would shut off. If if the car got in an accident or some shit, I don't know what it was, <laughs> and so his car just completely died. So it looked like he reverse Fonzied it, like you know what I mean. He slammed the door, and then the cow was dead, and he couldn't figure it out. And and so he spent like another half hour, like having a total fucking meltdown on Thayer Street. And the whole time, I'm like pissing my pants laughing because like I'm like whatever, we'll figure it out. But like, you know, if you saw Ryan on a on a tear. It was fucking it was fucking hysterical too, like because you'd get all red and fucking freaking out and shit. And it was like, all right, dude, we'll figure it out. And there was literally this little thing you had to like just fucking switch, flip. It was a weird thing. It was like inside the door thing. So I've been so much funnier if all the airbags blew. Like that escort was so gross though. It was like it was a red car with like red velour like interior. Like you know what I mean? Like red vinyl steering wheel and fucking like everything was like how much red can you fucking have? You know what I mean? And we were kind of I remember on, we were on we were like a Beavis and Butthead moment of me and him was like we were coming off um in the winter on one forty, you know, the severe corner yep. uh exit. Um uh and uh and we just totally started spinning and then we faced the wrong direction and we were stuck and like we didn't panic we were just laughing like beavis and bites like uh, like like we literally if a car or a truck came like we'd have been fucking dead we we had to get out and like fucking move the car but it was just i'm just remembering dumb shit with that red car dude like that thing was a fucking mess or when me you me and ryan were both dating girls that were roommates in like us uh, where, where, where are they kingston rhode island yeah you are right you are right yeah, yeah. And you'd come with us, the third <laughs> wheel. <laughs> and, and because who else do you bring to the bring out your chicks? Yeah. Oh, Shane comes through. <laughs> Shane comes through. And and um, that was those were good times though, because like, and they had a weird roommate who was like into like gourmet spaghetti. But at it, the time, I was like obsessed with spaghetti. Yeah, you, know? you were, you were. And, and like, th Sounds that's like a what, perfect match. Yeah. Oh, dude, it was the best. Like, because Shane would eat all this dude's spaghetti, and he like he was he wouldn't be around. He was away oh, it was for a the chick. weekends. I mean, it was a dude. Yeah. No, no, I no, thought no. you meant it was a chick. Like, the, no, no, their roommate. Yeah, the, it was the two girls lived together. With this other guy who was uh, a roommate, I thought the roommate was a chick. No, no. So there was three people, <laughs> and um, 
and he he used to hate it when we'd come and we'd come every weekend and he so he would leave for the weekend so one we displaced him out of his own house and then Shane would eat all of the dude's food and, <laughs> and like the you know and then the, every every Monday we'd all hear about it but we'd laugh like they, they that, that was like the only thing I was told I was like oh no don't touch Rob spaghetti that's just special spaghetti don't touch his spaghetti five minutes later I'm in the kitchen cooking his spaghetti yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's dumb memories but it's just fucking funny like just fucking jerk off shit but um. Yeah, I don't know. There's, there's so much, dude. This, this shit's overwhelming, dude. This is not... It's a fun podcast to do, but it's not... You know, it's a bittersweet one, you know? Pat, what do, what's... Uh, you know, what's uh, one of your favorite things? Or I don't know if stand I, Standout memories, I mean, you know? Like, I, I don't know if I have any appropriate stories to you can, uh, you tell can, them. You can, uh, you can censor it. If, if you say something real incriminating, you know, we can... Uh, we can uh, I can edit it out. <laughs> Very incriminating. I think I lose my job over. Uh, no, no, nothing. You can I know, do. no, 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 no. That's just my favorite thing about Ryan was like, like I said earlier, he's the most positive dude ever. Like, you know, no matter what you were trying to do, like he was just always there for you and, and would always be like helpful, you know, like give you good advice on what you, you know, just do shit better, you know, like just go at it 110% and fucking, it was just so much fun to be around and joke around and like the stories that you could come up with just the, t- just whoever's around, like, just everybody pitching in a little bit and just coming up with ridiculous stories, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, and that's, like, literally, that was one of the saddest things when, because, you know, we all do that, and it's awesome. Right. But me and Ryan got a 39-year history of, like, taking a joke and inflating it and inflating it and beating right. it to just death and adding to it. Yeah. And just, <laughs> and we all do that, which is, like, one of my favorite things. And it seems like every road trip has its own thing yep. that gets... uh made into like a, a new institution that, you know, that's a new joke that we just keep carrying on. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, man, like, yeah. And I just remember Ryan's laugh when Ryan would laugh till he chokes over that <laughs> shit. Like, yeah, that was fucking the best. Like, cause you, cause you wouldn't even be able to breathe and be like, <laughs> right. Doing that shit. Um, sorry. I'm just what? texting uh, some of the people that wanted to call in just seeing if they're ready. What? Whether it's like an ice cream parlor or like Charlie Boyd or like there's yeah. always something to a road trip that like you remember, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, I think uh, I think if if Frank gets on the line, he I think he wants to talk about tarantulas. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go into yeah. depth on that on air. <laughs> Why not? Like so, the the tarantula story was um, I was bringing my old and because other people might uh, allude into this one. You don't know this one, I don't think. Um, but like. <sighs> We would make something a ridiculous concept, even to a, a more ridiculous thing. And Christian, Christian can ty- start chiming in on this one. But um, years ago, I was getting my tins painted by that dude Rizzo in New Jersey, and I was bringing him out there to get dropped off because um, he does like sick airbrushing and shit. Like, and um, and uh, Ryan was looking off in the distance, and there was a, an Italian restaurant. And it was called like Tarantino's, and he was like. Is that restaurant called? Is that place called Tarantulas? <laughs> and I'm like, no, like, like, like. And I'm like, then it was like, why the fuck would a restaurant be called Tarantulas? Like, that's like the worst name for a fucking restaurant. And then it evolved into like, what's, like we were like what's people's fear. Yeah, <laughs> Let's call it yeah, a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. It was like, <laughs> like, like you you don't want any business. It's a complete money laundering operation. Like you you do nothing uh, at, at a, the restaurant called Tarantulas. And then we were like, what? Like, like and then just like, like we were like. How can we make this re- restaurant worse? And then for some reason it became a child. Uh, it, it became an ice cream parlor. And it was tarantulas, like an ice Slash. cream parlor called tarantulas. <laughs> and then and then I think it was Ryan was like, and then we can also offer like child massages there. So it was like tarantulas. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was like a, a fucking ice cream shop slash fucking child massage parlor like called tarantulas. Drop. And then there's going to be like dudes in a tarantula suit that come out. Like, and you'd see like like shitty dude legs and this like horrible fucking tarantula costume. Would come out. Like, like that was the mascot. Like, like drama means sprinkles. Yeah, it, was, it was like T.O. T- Tito, the touchy tarantula. Like, what's the, what's the name? Was fucking, I don't even know where I have this shit, but it just like, it, it was like, it, it made us laugh for about eight hours on a road trip. Hours it just got on yeah. for hours and hours and hours. But the, the even the, years the, later. Yeah. But the point of it was, is that Ryan would do the tarantula voice and Ryan had that voice that like, if, if you go back to the last, um, uh, 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 round table episode where he tried to sing the Kesha song that he was a fan of. That's pretty much the voice that he would do for the, for the tarantula's voice. Or, um, he was supposed to sing, uh, 
Slapshot Killing Frost in that voice. Like I was, I was, it was like my life mission to get Slapshot to play that song again so Ryan could get up and sing it in that horrible fucking voice. Oh, why didn't that happen? <laughs> I know. We, we almost had, I like, you know, we got inside guys and we right, were trying yeah, to make yeah. it fucking happen. It could have happened any yeah. show. It could have happened any show. Really? They probably would have let it. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, man, fucking, uh, let me, uh, hold on a second. I'm going to, um, get, take some calls. We're going to, we're going to make a call. Me... 100th caller gets a free, Oh. Please tell me. Oh wait, wait, hold on. Get get on the mic. Get on the mic. And I, I uh, before before this next piece of information comes out, I just want to profusely uh, apologize to the Rebello family. We were we were kids when we did this shit. So I had to look him up. Humberto Rebello. He's eighty four years old, and I guess he's still alive. And you said what was his address? Something on Orchid Lane. Three forty five Orchid Street. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I got his number here. Is it still nine nine two four two eight six? Yeah. It is? What the fuck? What the fuck? I'd like to apologize right. in advance to the so, Rebello family. <laughs> all right. All right. No one call that number and be a jerk off, please. Like, the dude had enough. He had enough. I can't... See, dude, but see, that's the crazy thing, right? Uh, is I, that... I haven't... That number's from when we were literally in elementary you got exactly, or early middle... Yeah, no, you got exactly. middle school, I mean. Middle school. I don't. I couldn't tell you. I don't know your number, Dan. Yeah. I, by hot, but that number. I don't number, know anybody's phone. We number prank called that yeah. motherfucker so much. I still knew his his fucking number, and I knew the street, but yeah. not the not the the house number. But Dan, yeah. Bilbo Baggins. Bilbo, yeah. I, I haven't looked into him yet, but it only took me about five minutes to find him. I know, but you're the you're like the master of that shit. I, while you're looking up Bilbo Baggins, I'm going to call downtown yeah, Dave. All right, here it goes. Hey, what's up, Truth? What's happening, Dave? You, uh, we're, we're live, so so don't swear and say uh, say bad things. Say no, fuck. you can say, you can say bad things, but don't say don't say th- <laughs> don't say anything you regret because I know you're a wild card. Um. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for that disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, we're just you know talking about Ryan and dumb shit we did and fucking good times and just uh things uh you know just about Ryan's character or standout memories with him. Um, and uh, downtown Dave is uh, is in uh, Tucson, Arizona, so that's why he's on the phone and not with us right now. Um, but yeah, man, anything you wanted to add to the fray? I know you haven't heard what we've already recorded, but uh, <laughs> but from your perspective, man, like you always have a you always have a good uh, philosophical th- uh, perspective on things, man. Like um, any standout memories or things you wanted to mention uh, about Ryan? Oh man, I mean. I mean, to somebody who, who didn't know Ryan, the, the thing that really stood out the most was his sense of humor. Um, he could just take the most mundane <laughs> situation and make it fucking absurd and hilarious, and then it would just be this running joke. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, his, his sense of humor, but really super intelligent guy and also streetwise just like somebody that you like to be around but you like having around too um just based on his background and and the way he um he carried himself and um i mean yeah there's there's all kinds of jokes but like the the thing i can't underscore the most is how he had this ability to just take things that if anybody else said him, I just don't think they'd be fucking funny, man. I I don't know. That that's that's my take. I mean, would you agree with that? Like, you you've known him for fucking decades, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely, man. And and uh, and we just we just walked through the whole tarantula scenario. So like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what's, what was funny about that? So that was the <laughs> Houston trip where we were recording, right? So. We that's that's where guys. it got blown up. It had, had it was a pre existed one from when me and him went to New Jersey. I I just I told the origin <laughs> story. I didn't I didn't get into the whole Houston part of it, but go, go ahead, go ahead. Well, 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 the thing that there were things that were unexpected about Ryan and that trip. One of the things that really um, that that I was really surprised at was um, he was so Johnny was recording us and and you guys all sang on um, on that recording with us. That was uh, the, the one song bound by hate. But I remember we were doing gang vocals and I was standing next to him and I'm like, he's a good fucking singer. Like I never uh, knew that he had like a really 
a good, you know, I mean, why would you not expect that, man? Yeah. I mean, like all the, 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 the shows that, you know, he had, he had gone to or whatever, but, um, yeah, that was something I was like, wow, man. And, and but he, also had, about he, that he, he also had a good parody voice too. That was <laughs> <laughs> the tarantula ended up, I think on like one of the early mixes that Johnny made. I don't know if it, if it, was if it uh, made it on. Yeah. You know how it is when you're, I, I mean, yeah. Like I was trying to find the record today and I don't fucking have a copy of it, which is funny, you know, but this anyway, is, uh, this I was, is, I was for, for the listeners. You didn't announce it. That was, we're talking about brick top. So brick top. Uh, yes, brick top. Yes. Yeah. Years ago, um, we, we all went out to, to Houston, uh, to record the, the, which record was that about? No. Um, Oh fuck. I know the one song was found by hate. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. we did, uh, but there was, it ended up being a, a mini, uh, release. Yeah, that trip. So we did the two shows, and I remember uh, one of them. We were coming back, and it was it was uh, it was late at night, and there were three vehicles. And Rick Top, we were in our suburban, and we were waiting to go to this Mexican restaurant drive-through. It was probably like two o'clock in the morning, and it had it was like this little cul-de-sac. I don't know if you remember that, but we were waiting uh, in, in the in the suburban. We were first, and you guys were right in back of us. So maybe Johnny was in back of us. I know there were three three cars. And uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm pulling up to the fucking window, and uh, I hear somebody yell, uh, "The guys in the green blazer are Nazis!" <laughs> 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 and it's you know two shaved head dudes in the band, and me all fucking rockabilly, looking like I'm in the skinhead retirement home. And I'm like, "Fuck, man, these people are gonna." Spitting our food, man. You know, it was. I know it was Ryan. I swear to God, it, it it had to have been. So yeah, it was just fucking great shit like that. You know, like unexpected shit. And that trip, you know, it was like super funny. What I really um, loved, I mean, all of it, just like conversing with him. But even like, like we'd go down to that that fucking Shell gas station that uh, sold. They had a, they had a, like a Mexican restaurant in there. You know, you could get uh, yeah, takeout the, burritos, the, the breakfast tacos. Yeah, man. And uh, just walking down there and, and hanging out with them, getting coffee, like talking to them. It was the same thing at um, Full Speed Ahead. Um, I spent a lot of time talking to him and it was like so cool. The, the thing, he, he was he was super excited at that point about, uh, he was he, he said he wasn't really like a tech person, but he had just gotten an iPad in this Procreate program. And, you know, I mean, you know, he is like a gifted artist you know and and it was it was so cool man like talking to him about that he was super excited about how things were going with his boy he just he was doing really well and he seemed like really happy and and i think that um that's probably and it's just such a like simple thing but it's like one of my favorite memories man it's, it's like the 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 last um the last time i'd seen him well the last last time i saw him was at a papa gino's truth we That's we right. all ate fucking Papaginos and uh and yeah man I Jim, Jim's to, uh, here right now Jim's here right now too like the oh uh, Jim how you doing brother speaking uh, of Papaginos there's an empty Papaginos yeah, yeah. box like a foot and a half from my hand right now <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome man but yeah anyway um D that, Dave, that, Dave gets uh, excited about Papaginos which is a, a chain pizza place <laughs> out here the same way we get excited about Filiberto's or Los Petos like. Uh, Mexican places. Totally. Yeah. I, well, I, yeah, I grew up out there. They, yeah, you know, I know, and I know. Yeah, it's 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 just I don't know. It never leaves you. But yeah, anyway. Um, well, you know the, uh, the 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 Dracula story. Uh, that's like that's a that's attributed to me and Ryan. Like the Ryan was like um, when because um, I, I know you love the Dracula stuff. Uh, oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we used to in the early days of the internet like ryan had america online only to fuck with people like that and we would go on chat rooms and we'd go on the um the uh occult or like paranormal research um chat rooms and uh we would fuck with people and uh you know we would just go in and be like i think my neighbor's a dracula <laughs> like what do i do <laughs> And then people would get so pissed off that just so pissed off that you were calling a vampire or a Dracula. It was that simple. And that's all you had to do. And then it just set it off. It set off like a chain of events. And it got to the point where like Ryan was so 
bored like when they like that he he made a whole alter ego and ryan knew a lot about like paranormal <laughs> shit like he studied he really knew he was well fucking versed in like weird paranormal shit and that's one of the biggest regrets i have is that me and him were going to do like a paranormal episode uh where we talked about a lot of weird shit because me and him would talk for hours just about fucking weird shit and um and not ghosts and stuff but like you know like shit in the, the <laughs> antarctica like crazy shit like deep shit not and not flatter shit or bullshit like that like just weird shit yeah. he was very obsessed with all like the um the craziness in like national parks and stuff like that and uh but anyway um and so he knew a lot about it so he set himself up and he was like yeah you know i've been a paranormal researcher for like 20 years and blah, blah. now you gotta understand this is after like months of tormenting all the people with the dracula bullshit and um so he's like all right i gotta go deep now i just remember him like i go deep so he spent like weeks like researching shit and and you know he was getting he was establishing credibility on the board as like this like paranormal researcher like he's like you went like literally put serious fucking time into this so for like two weeks he had all these people convinced that he was a paranormal researcher and so at the end of it he was like you know I, you know i've done a lot of I, i've seen a lot and i've experienced a lot and i've written about a lot and i you know and uh, i've conducted investigations and whatnot and he goes but there's only one thing that i can absolutely you know say is real in in this like and everyone was like hanging on his words and like what what and he goes he goes that my neighbor's a Dracula. <laughs> and, and they all got so pissed off. People like, wow, what the fuck? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah. This guy, you know, but it was so fucking funny, dude. Because like, cause like it was at the point where people were like sending him things like about Vlad the Impaler and like, you know, like, you know, you know, you're talking about Dracula. You're really talking about vampires. But if you want, but Dracula was Vlad the Impaler, blah, blah, blah. Like, like, you know, they were sending him like things about Vlad the Impaler and he was just right back was Vlad the Impaler a Dracula <laughs> and it would just piss him off and it was like so funny because he was such an antagonizer dude and it, it was some of the funniest shit like I mean, we'd spend hours we'd spend hours we'd go on there as Glenn Danzig and fuck with like like punk rock kids and stuff but we knew so much about the misfits and Danzig that they were like well if you just still is that and we would know and and just like we would just I'd, he, he just loved fucking around and having a good time and that was like awesome but he he was fucking witty with shit man and and uh you know knew how to fuck with people and and uh uh, that's one of the things I fucking loved, man, for sure. And, and I'll miss. Well, I mean, like, we were doing that to the bitter yeah, end, you know. Totally, and I mean, you you told me this story like two weeks ago. <laughs> you were just telling it. And I'm fucking laughing again. It's just so funny, man. Like how he had that fucking ability. It was uncanny. Yeah. Yeah. He could take something and just make it fucking absurd. Oh my god, man. I mean, I mean, and I beg to anyone who's like, because you probably, unless you knew him, like when you know him, it makes it even funnier. But listen to any of the roundtable episodes of the podcast because we even there we were talking about fucking bronado, fucking energy drinks and like dumb shit with like ninjas and like and he, he, you know, he went on a big tirade of what the displays would look like and he was making himself laugh and was making all of us laugh and fucking, you know what I mean? And 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 that's that's yeah. what it was all the time, you know what I mean? For like forty fucking years, so you know I'm gonna miss that yep. the most. You know, like, you know, besides having, you know, he was a brother, dude, and, you know, and, and, and family, but like, you know, I'm just going to miss all the fucking silliness, man. Like, you know, like, you know, it's just fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. But yeah, man, thanks. Yeah. For, thanks for popping on, dude. Anything else? I mean, yeah, I, um. I, I I was Brent wanted to come on too, but he wanted to talk about the Houston thing. So I think we got that covered. Uh, oh shit! I'm gonna tell him you you, you, you oh, usurped him. You usurped him. I, uh, I'm just fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you. Uh, well, so fucking. Anyway, yeah, I don't know, man. I I mean, I think that um, the other thing that was like that was really cool. I didn't you know, realize it at first, but then after a while, like realizing what an animal lover he was and man, I fucking love animals too, you know? And it was just, I don't know, man, like I'm truth. I'm just going to fucking miss him. Oh yeah. And, absolutely, uh, man. And, so, uh, and, and you nailed that. And so, you know, any, you know, not even to, to eulogize stuff, but like, you know, the basic shit was Ryan loved, you know, he, he loved like, obviously his family and his son, his son more than anything in the world. Like he was, he, yep. he was very concerned about being a good dad and bringing his kid up. Right. And making a cool kid that like got exposed to things, but could make his own choices and think for himself. And, uh, 
but you know he was he was very concerned about you know from from the day he became a father because you know you never know like you know like we're jackasses but when he had a kid like like he took it fucking serious you know and 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 and, and uh you know that was his biggest concern in life with his kid and his family like his, he always looked out for his father and stuff like his, in the later years because like his father's getting older and living alone and stuff so you know the day he passed that was his big plan was to go see his father and then he was going to go over to chop head and hang out and fucking whatever but he uh you know and animals like always fucking good to animals dude but like he loved i don't know i couldn't tell you what the exact order was but i could tell you he loved he loved his family he loved his his friends he loved his animals um and uh, like punk hardcore and tattooing, man. That was that was his fucking life, man. You know, and uh, and weird yeah. shit, and the the weird weird shit, like paranormal, like weird fucking arcane stuff. Like he he loved he loved the weird shit, you know. And uh, yeah, brother. So, but it was cool, man. Interested motherfucker, man. Like there ain't there ain't uh, there ain't many left, you know. So it was like sad when no, but, no, I agree with you, brother. All right, man. Well, fuck yeah, dude. Thanks, I, thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah. And uh, we we gonna probably do an episode sometime when you come out because uh, you're out this way once uh, once or twice a year now. You know what I mean? We do one yeah. face, face to face. We'll just fucking. That sounds great. All right, bud. I'll talk to you, bro. All right, man. And, and, uh, if right, I don't see you ahead you of time, I'll see you in October on the ride. Sounds good, brother. All right, man. Love and respect. You too, bud. Bye. All right. Fuck yeah, man. Let's see. Uh, Jim, you want to come on for a second? Say anything? I'm going to get the next call lined up. No. Man, a few words. But big yeah. heart. Big hearts. Small mouth, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Jim and me worked the door at hell for I don't know how many years. And uh, Ryan would always come. Remember, he'd always come with like coffees and hot chocolates. Yeah. In mid-January, we were standing at the door because we were too much assholes to allow a heater to be outside because we didn't want anyone standing outside with us. <laughs> and Ryan would make the trip out just to bring us fucking coffees and shit. I just, that's just something that spurred. Um, Christian, man, what's happening? I'm gonna take. Just make sure you stay close to that. I got, I got a couple. You said you could censor these things, mm-hmm. right? So I got a couple Ryan stories. <laughs> I'm going to try to center as best I can, but you might need to help a little bit with it. Um, so there's a, there's a couple. There's the, you know, stabbing the Coke midget in the face one that I, I haven't really figured out how I can center that one correctly right. yet, the punk rock Coke midget stabbing incident. Yeah, do you, do you, do you want – let me give an outline, <laughs> and then you can fill in details because okay. I, think I, can, I think I can do this. Well, there was a couple instances in that same night, the huge burnout at the end of the night, shit like that. And yeah, the, the burnout. On so, the bus. <laughs> so let me let me just was this that same trip? No, this was we were in Austin. This was that same trip, right? But we I think were, it was the same trip. I don't know why we were in Austin. Oh, because Johnny had a show down there. Yeah, we did a show or something. Yeah. Yeah. So we were in Austin, Texas, and um we'd come up with like a decree that we could do three shots of tequila. <laughs> and then after three shots, that's like like well, you, could you could do two, but it's the third one that shit goes squirrely. Yeah, you could do two, and everything was fine. But if you decide to take the third one, the the night goes into a direction that you don't know where it's headed. And it goes into the weird. Okay. So that night we all drank, I don't know how many shots of tequila, and then somehow we ended up in the alleyway behind the club with a little midget, <laughs> punk rock midget. Wasn't he on a mini chopper? He was on a mini chopper. Yeah. He had a mini mohawk. Super cool guy, like very, yeah. very nice dude. I don't. And so if if midget's offensive, a little person, whatever. Oh yeah, you know, I'm, not, you know, I'm not good at being not, very PC. Yeah, we're not saying anything. He was like, cool as shit. So if but he was cool, motherfucker. Him, sucks, he but. probably would dig you, say midget, right? You yeah, wouldn't be pissed. He was, he was fine. So Ryan was partaking of a substance that you sniff uh, with this with this said midget. Yeah. Now this is after the three shots. Like we're in the alley of a fucking bar. Well past in the three shots. Well past three shots of tequila, and we had worked really hard to get this substance, and it took most of the night. And it was probably towards the closing time of this night that we finally got our hands on this shit. That was uh, so thanks we to eager, Scott, like right? Kids. Big Scott, yeah, yeah. Yep. Thanks to Big Scott. Um, <laughs> thanks, Big Scott. But um, but so anyway, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so this is the scene. You're you're in this alley. There's Ryan, you, 
couple of us hanging out. Um, it's a very small alley. It was very small. And very a midget who pulled up on a little alley. mini chopper. Uh, <laughs> and Ryan's, Ryan's letting um, the midget sniff uh, something off of his knife. And for some reason, Ryan just had the devil in his eye and he just sliced his septum. He just twitched. <laughs> he he just just, twitched. It was just no reason for it. And all of us went silent because it started bleeding right away. <laughs> so this is bloody little midget who immediately went from like life of the potty to super pissed off. <laughs> And he just he just he just bounced. He like ran over to his chopper, his mini <laughs> chopper, and took off into the night, dude. It was so fucking epic. Oh, we were doubled over for like yeah. twenty minutes after that. Just couldn't move. That was so funny. Yeah, it was fucking great. Like, <laughs> because it was it was it was um, what's not the word is epic. It's like um, what's the word for when something's like like you don't think it's it's not real like dragons and shit what are the, what's surreal surre- yeah. surreal but like yeah like legendary yeah. epic i don't know it like it was fucking legendary it was magical it was a magical night that was one of the things i'll miss most about <laughs> ryan is I, I didn't get to have him as long as you guys did in my life for 10 15 years but like finding other adults that are down for the fucking mischief and stupid no matter, shit at, at any cost at yeah. cost to your freedom <laughs> to your wallet to your family like we were we were just to his health, of asshole, you know like yeah, you know, he he he. I'll uh, miss him. Yeah, no, I know we all will. I'm uh, I'm paying attention, but I'm just getting the next guy lined up. I think oh. summarizing up just how ridiculous Ryan was, and just everything hanging out with him was fun. Things that might not sound like crazy and fun was just absolutely fun. We drove up to a show in Connecticut once, and the whole way there, we listened to Connect, uh, listened to uh, Killing Time, except we sang along and added a fucking in every single line. And it didn't get old, and it had like a one-hour ride, and it was just like, <laughs> so, yeah, no, no, and and things like that, like me, Ryan, and uh, Sonder, our old shop mm-hmm. apprentice, were at uh, Big Nick's house in New York when he still lived in Long Island, and um, we we had to leave. Were you with it? were you here for this? Is it the suck him silly Sonder? No, it wasn't suck him <laughs> suck him suck him silly Sonder. It was that was on when we were going to film the TV show with the. Um, oh yeah, those no, other the dudes. Winnebago, the, yeah. We, yeah, we had the Winnebago, and we were filming with the uh, Impractical Joker dudes. But whatever. Um, no, uh, we were coming back from upstate New York, and uh, not upstate uh, uh, Long Island, and um, it was a massive snowstorm, like sketchy fucking snowstorm, and like, and like Nick was like, "Nah, you guys should stay," and then like there was a little debate in the house about that. And, and then, so we, but we, we ended up having to leave in this fucking crazy snowstorm and we wouldn't let Sonda talk to us unless he was, unless it was in a rap form (laughs) and we, we wouldn't acknowledge it, but we kept it up for the whole fucking, it took like so many hours to get home because it was, because the highways were like fucked up and shut down. And we're like, Sonda would say, Hey guys, can blah, blah, blah. And we would we just ignore him and we we're like, we only we can only hear you when when you talk in rap. So we made Sonder like struggle and like come up with raps for everything he needed to say to us. But like committed to the bit was like the was the term for him because like we didn't let it go the whole four hours. Like much like if you watch I don't know which Chophead DVD it was, but we did the test tone challenge. Test with tone challenge. Me, you and Ryan listened to a fucking test tone. <laughs> For how many hours just to see if we could do it? It was states. I think we went through three states. It was like, so it was many, was many it like, hours. I don't remember how many, but it was at least four hours, I think, <laughs> that we listened to that fucking thing yep. and, and filmed. Just find a tone between stations on your AM, FM dials that's really obnoxious and see how long until somebody screams their head off. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, so I got uh, Ryan Packer on deck right here. Uh, I'm going to give him a call, and uh, we'll get him on. Um I'm like slowly navigating my phone for some reason. Uh, but yeah, dude, fucking um There was the fucking uh, the green light when we got when we got green lit by the lesbian biker gang in Baltimore. <laughs> that was that was that was mostly Ryan. I yeah, think I yeah. can probably leave a lot of names out of that one and be tell that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me get back around the phone. Did I say the name of the? <laughs> nah, MC? I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. Oh. I use I use loosely MC. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I don't, I don't know what just happened. Oh, are you there, Packer? 
I am. All right. I could. I keep. I had shutting the mic off, so I didn't. I couldn't hear you, even though the phone was there. Uh, so we got Ryan Packer, who's uh, transmitting live from uh, slap shot practice right now um, in Boston to uh, to come on with us. Um, uh, me and Christian and uh, Shane are on the mics, and uh, Pat and uh, Dan and, and and Jim are in the room with us. Um, What's up, everybody? Yeah, you know, we're just talking about, um, you know, favorite, uh, you know, Ryan uh, stories or just stand out, stand out times or stand out stories or just general kind of eulogizing the motherfucker, you know? Yeah, man. That's, uh, you know, I I, I was thinking about a lot of things, you know, that I wanted to bring up and, and, and that I wanted to share and all that, but like, most of it is nefarious activity. I mean, as I'm sure that's what all the, all the stories are. I mean, that's that's a trick of dude. You know, you're such a, a fucking funny fucking dude that yeah. you, know, you can fucking cut loose with the motherfucker, right? Yeah. But um, you know, I mean, I'm at I'm at fucking practice right now, man, and like I, I keep going back to that 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 fucking time in the backseat of the of the car when he was singing fucking Killing Frost and yeah. that fucking voice that he used to do, man. <laughs> you know, it's just absolutely fucking hysterical, man. I, I, and I still got it. Like, I, I think it's actually on my old phone. But, uh, you know what I mean? Oh, you, wait, you, you, got him, you got him singing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh. I sent it to Jack like, when he was doing it fucking years ago. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> remember, like, well, I was like, dude, you guys got to bring it back because we got to get Ryan up to, to like, <laughs> literally sing it. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. It was in the same yeah, voice again as the Kesha voice uh, from the last fucking uh, uh, um, the round table. Yeah, I was gonna take yeah. a piece of that and like edit it into here today, but I was like, I, I, that's beyond my <laughs> yeah. technical. Yeah, I, yeah, that voice singing fucking killing song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> the best is too yeah. is uh, to tie in with that voice and singing. Um, and we were just talking about Big Nick. There was one time when me and Ryan were driving to Nick's house. And um, 95 was shut down because one of the Feng Hua, like Chinese uh, buses uh, that <laughs> that went from Boston to New York for like $4 um, uh, flipped over on the highway. And there was like, it was, it was a bad accident and people actually died and there was like dead people on the road and stuff. But we were trapped in so much fucking traffic. It was like dead stop. They shut down a major route. But I had, I was in my Jeep and my Jeep had a CB, a CB radio. <laughs> So me and Ryan were just fucking with the truckers and he was doing that voice, but he was singing the karate kid song, like the, from Chicago. <laughs> like, no, no, not the, the best around. It was, um, uh, what was it? Uh, he was like a knight in shining armor. Like he was doing that one from a long time ago. And he was like, and he would do the do 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 do. You know, he'd always do like the dumb noises and shit. And uh, and he was singing it for like twenty minutes. Like, but like taking up like the airwaves. And then when he stopped, the fucking truckers were going bad shit because he was like holding up the 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 channel or whatever. You know, just just <laughs> complete nonsense and like. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty much like the Dracula thing, you know, like like he just kept going with it. And like he'd like let it go for a couple minutes and I'd see him like start like chuckling and then he'd pick up the mic again and start singing it. And, <laughs> and or he would act like a trucker and he'd be like, Oh yeah, you know, and he would ask about like directions up ahead and then when they would respond and uh, they'd be like, you know, like come back, whatever, and then he would just start singing that song and getting them and fucking just, just straight antagonizing dude. Like that was I don't know. So much. Oh. <laughs> Have you guys discussed the uh, uh, tarantulas? Uh, yes, the tarantulas. <laughs> tarantulas has come up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't get into. We didn't get into the full details of how crazy it was with the concepts and the commercial <laughs> plans and the basically storyboarding it. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> ice cream parlor plus children's massage. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> fucking creep. <laughs> it's the cre- biggest creep show ever. Like, yeah. hey kids! <laughs> hey, kids. <laughs> yeah. 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 Great you you look look kind of yeah. <laughs> You're looking kind of tense. It was just hours of idiocy on the road. That was one of the things too. Is like, you know, the last couple of years were hard because he he couldn't really travel because of kidney issues. Um, yeah, but yeah. when he could be on the road, man, like he was the dog. You he was the road dog you wanted in the car with you because it was just fucking laughs for hours and hours and hours, just all just stupidity. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. He's gonna fucking be missed, man. It's fucking. It's not the fucking time without him already. Oh. Oh, no, no, yeah. There's, there's no. definitely a void that 
like this, that won't ever get filled with that, you know. Uh, yeah. But dude, um, you know, uh, not to change the subject, but while you're on the line, uh, you know, do you want to um, talk about what's going on with Slapshot? We were supposed to do that podcast, but you don't know, give everyone a just quick rundown of it's th- yeah, Slapshot man, 35th feel- anniversary, man. What you know, that's big, big deal, you know. So 2020 was uh, was our 35th anniversary. We had, uh, we had a lot of shit planned uh, that all got fucking canceled. Yeah. So uh, uh, so now things are getting rescheduled. We're going back. Uh, we have uh, a quick run with uh, Shia Terra coming up in October. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, I mean, we had all this time off, so we wrote a bunch of fucking songs. So uh, was it tomorrow? We fly out to Houston. We're going. Uh, Johnny Rio's going to record a new Slapshot record and a new uh, Stars and Stripes record. So we're going to bang that out and then uh, hit the fucking road, man. We got, so we got, we got that shit tour. Uh, our Boston shows um, are going to be November 19th and November 20th. And uh, you know what? I can actually, I'll, a world premiere announced right on the YouTube uh, podcast uh, Sunday of uh, the 21st. Uh, it's going to be us, Murphy's Law, Shark Attack, uh, Johnny Rios doing True Intentions, and uh, Please Die from uh, from Philly. Nice. Uh, that one's not sold that, out, right? That one's not, not sold out. So the tickets go on sale uh, Friday, I believe. I think we're going to announce it on the internet uh, Wednesday. I don't okay. think it's going to Friday, but when like, you hear me here first on the Big Three podcast, that, uh, that's what's happening. Uh, a third yeah. show has been added. <laughs> yeah, because the first two sold out in what minutes, pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah. The social trip show sold out in a couple minutes, and then uh, the other show sold out like a couple hours from now. Uh, so because of uh, high demand, we're, we're adding a third show. Hell yeah, and then that's, that's that's it for this year. Um, going back back to Europe in May and, and all that shit, you know. Uh, go from there. Well, fuck yeah, man. Uh, uh, yeah, punk rock going actually. That's our first show back. That's in Vegas. Um, uh, September 26th, I think we're playing. Pat, I'm uh, sorry, we're, we're, we're not, we're just distracted because Pat show, Pat's here showing us, what is that? What the fuck is that? I saw the cat mask over in the corner over there, so I, look, I was looking up cat costumes. <laughs> it's, this, it's this dude in a cat costume, but it's way more hysterical if you envision Pat in this costume. I, I'm like, hold on, I'm going to take a screenshot of it so I can send it to you. Oh, Pat, can you actually just send that to, to, yeah, yeah. to Packer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just fucking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you do, you do. Because you want to imagine and Pat and this and Christian can't even come to the mic right now. He's laughing so fucking hard. That's that's yeah, so, so, so those of you at home that uh, don't know what uh, those of you at home that don't know what Pat Gary looks like, uh, picture an Irish ninja turtle. That's what he, like. <laughs> he called him an Irish ninja turtle. <laughs> I've been that like 12. <laughs> Patatello. Pat- Patatello. Like no, because now I'm seeing like the, I'm seeing the bandana with the little mask. Oh. <laughs> now picture well, that guy wearing a cat costume. Like right? I'm looking up shit like that. With the Viking helmet on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Dan's, Dan's grumpy cat mask. Uh, fuck yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like we need to take a fucking well. We got that. We got October coming up. That's going to be a good one, and that'll be a good homage to Ryan, man. I'm sure we'll have a lot of good fucking fun yeah, and fucking Arizona's going to be. That's going to be a fucking fun run, man. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. Did I send you? Did uh, Brent, Brent sent around the new flyer? Did you see the new flyer? Now that it's the uh, Ian Ryan Memorial yeah. run. Yeah, I just saw it like an hour ago. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dan's Dan's putting on the the grumpy the grumpy cat mask. I gotta take a so take, good, a, yeah. <laughs> so take a picture of this for the for, for the. <laughs> All right, yeah. There's a lot of idiocy going on here. It pretty much <laughs> looks like what you'd expect right now. Um, fuck yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I've ne- we've never called Pat Patatello though. Like that's. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine a sweaty Ninja Turtle. <laughs> a sweaty, a sweaty yeah, a Irish Ninja Turtle. Ninja yeah. turtle. Fuck yeah. He's got five, six, and about four feet wide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, well, fuck yeah, man. Well, um, have a good... Uh, I, well, I'm sure I'll talk to you, man, but guys, you well, leaving tomorrow? Uh, Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll fucking talk to you before and, and um. Cool, bro. 
Hit me up tomorrow if you're out and about. We'll do, man. Yeah, I got to work, and then we do rehearsals, and then, and then that's it. We eat the fucking road, so that's, that's the fucking life back into it now, man. <laughs> All right. But, uh, yeah, cool. man, I appreciate the call. I love you guys. Fucking be safe. Fucking shout out the fucking Iron Line, man. I fucking I love you, and I miss you, brother. 100%, man. All right, yeah. man. We'll talk yeah. to you soon, bro. All right, later, later. on. All right. I got to call Rio, uh, Johnny Rio right now because he's only got like 15 minutes before his next haircut appointment. All right, so we'll get him on the line. This is like a fucking high-tech show right now, man. <laughs> People coming and going. Fucking f- countrywide. Yeah. Dude. Hello? Hey, what's going on? We got Johnny Rio what? on the line with us. Uh, 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 it's uh, me and uh, Shane, who I, I'm not sure if you met. Shane does all our screen printing. Uh, old friend of me and Ryan from high school. Uh, Pat is here. Dan is here. Uh, Christian's here on the mic, and uh, and our friend Jim is 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 in is in house with us right now. We're we're broadcasting from the tattoo shop in, in proper homage to Ryan. Uh, oh, right on. So yeah. uh, you know, uh, fun trivia fact: uh, Johnny Rio and Ryan Rio both have fathers named Ronald Joseph Rio, and they both have wives named Melissa, or had yeah. wives named Melissa. Well, actually, Ryan never yeah. got divorced, so he still has a, has a wife <laughs> named Melissa. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, it's true, uh, true uh, real fashion. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's no disrespect to Melissa or Jen, you know what I mean? Like, no, Ryan of just course not. Ryan just didn't really do do paperwork that good. <laughs> That's really all yeah. it comes down to. Dude. <laughs> he just didn't really he didn't really have the the the, the uh, constitution for paperwork, <laughs> so. You know, um, I mean, you know, you might argue that uh, the Rios aren't maybe the best at being married, but you never <laughs> know, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So basically, we're just you know doing a little send off for Ryan and uh, and uh, talking about you know Ryan and um, you know any favorite or standout memories or you know just well, thoughts and shit. You know, I still contend that maybe the most I've ever laughed and I'm sure it's probably been brought up a lot better than I have because you guys turned on it but I had a couple quick stories man and the the one was uh, was uh, probably the most I've laughed in the last fucking 10 years would be the uh, tarantulas (laughs) (laughs) everyone's brought up the tarantulas so dude hey and if if some motherfucking rich motherfucker is listening to this and you open up a a, a ice cream shop called tarantulas just know like you know you gotta cut us in on that you know we're gonna get a lot of shit sent to you well (laughs) you're gonna get a lot of shit sent to your business (laughs) part of the beautiful part about it was just how excited right Ryan was and how we got that voice going. Yeah, with yeah, it, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. Looking it's tarantulas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I know it was a fucking. It was, you know, our shit show sense of humor. Like, I don't know if it can really translate well because people need to be there for the whole like eight hour conversation of it, how it just builds slowly and slowly. Right. And then like one new piece gets added to it or like, and then it starts it all over again and no one talks about it for an hour. And then they're like, Yo, you know, it'd be fucking hysterical if blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then it sends a whole fucking shit, shit show spiral again. Um, just the most sick fuck business plan you ever heard in your life. <laughs> you know, it's horrible. And, and by, you know, anybody out there who's, upset about it like it's a fucking joke it's parody yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah no one yeah, really yeah. wants to open up an ice yeah. cream shop and child massage <laughs> shop called tarantulas <laughs> with tio tito the touchy tarantula as the fucking mascot Clearly no one not. really yeah. wants to do yeah. that um well yeah no one in this room also, no one, we're, none we're of us really group, really <laughs> yeah i mean we're also with a group of friends that call ourselves hate fuckers too, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a little <laughs> Yeah, but uh, the other thing, the other thing that I that I wanted to like, obviously when when we first started hanging out, we started doing all the lines. Like when he was like, "Oh yeah, my father uh, R J R is is his uh, initials in this." And I'm like, "Get the fuck out of here! That's my father's initials too." And he's like, "Oh, Ronald Joseph Rio," and I'm like, "Get the fuck out of here! That's the same." Yeah, you know. So I mean. The craziest part about that is like my last name is fucking rare, even in the in in New England. Like if you yeah. you know look up people with my name, even on like social media or whatever, there's not a lot of people with that name. So just the fact that there was somebody even within our small 
circle. Scene and circle, you know what I mean? Like, shit, there was probably, you know, 200 guys at a time going to hardcore shows from all over New England back when we were kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty small, small section. But Pat, I, Pat I just will said say in like, Canada, Rio is like Smith, but not, not down here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not even really, but they have like a, uh, where Ryan, I don't, I have no idea if this was accurate or what, but he was like, do you even know where the name comes from? And I was like, I, I mean, no, I mean, fuck, I don't, my dad, you know, our parents, whatever. And he was like, no, he's like, we used to be called something else. And he knew what that name was, but he said, we used to be called something else. And that somewhere along the line, the guy with that name had like murdered some sort of French royalty and he had to go into exile and the hiding and everybody. And so there was like a death, a, you know, automatic death sentence to anybody with that name, just because they had killed royalty. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he had claimed that it was like a, um, a new name that came out of that. And I have no, I, you know, I don't even know how the hell he would have known that or how he would have backtracked that up. But he told me with the utmost of seriousness and, uh, I don't know. That's the type of shit I'll take with me anyway. Well, that's what we say, man. Like he would, if he got into something, like he would, he would research that shit to no end. Like he was really into like, you know, anything weird or bizarre or like, you know, like all that stuff, like paranormal stuff, but like, and then even things like you said, like genealogy and stuff, like in research and yeah. the name and where it came from. Like if he was hot on something, man, he, he really got into it, you know? Um, Dude, I mean, I got fucking, uh, I'm pretty, I have a pretty terrible memory as it is, but in stoner brain, but like it's, uh, but he, he knew every little detail about it too. You know what I mean? What the name was, where it, where, what part of France it came out of. And like, he just knew every little bit about the origins of it. You know what I mean? It makes me wonder because every time that I would see him, I would think to myself, I really got to sit with him again and get that full story. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, It would have been good to even have recorded or something. Yeah, yeah, you, could, yeah. You, you would you would know just to, to keep having it because now you're gonna have to do all the research yourself, right? Right. <laughs> Motherfucker yeah. couldn't fill out a fucking divorce certificate, but he could research <laughs> the name Rio. <laughs> like to look. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding around. Everybody, you know, everyone that's in in Ryan's world like knows that's a fucking joke. You know what I mean? But oh yeah, yeah. But fuck yeah, well, yeah, man. I'm, fuck goes without saying, man. I'm gonna miss him a lot. You know, well, um, what you need to do is make sure you go to the old brick top recording and get Ryan when he was talking about the tarantula thing. And uh, <laughs> you, you deep, you deep. Oh, track. fuck. I do have that, don't I? I know you got it somewhere. So you got to dig that Holy out. Holy shit. I forgot and, all and about I know, that. And dude. I know Slapshot and Stars and Stripes are coming out to record. So you got to yeah. like deep track that and hide it subliminally in one of their tracks. Dude, I forgot all about that. I'm sure I do have that somewhere. Yeah, you gotta that's wild. Just yeah. isolate, isolate his vocal, and uh, and uh, I'm gonna know. I'm gonna record an intro for your podcast. <laughs> Hell yeah! <I'll> like, <laughs> hey, you know what I need? Actually, bro, no, because because I I got the intro. I need an outro. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Do a little tarantula outro that's for a me. Great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just put a bomb at the end, but I, I need I need a proper outro. I feel like you know what I mean. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, we'll talk about that later, man. I know you got an appointment coming through the door in any second, and I don't want to I don't want to fuck. Yeah, up, man. Fuck up I'm glad mind. you included me, brother. No, absolutely, and, uh, man. You 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 guys got the same name, dude. There's uh, you know I don't, it's, <laughs> it, it's, you had to be on, you know. Right. Oh but, yeah. yeah. Well, love to all the fellas, man, and and you too, and uh, and we'll talk soon, man. Absolutely, man. Have a good one. We'll we'll we'll, t- we'll talk soon, bro. All right, brother. All right, later on. All right, cool. Well, Dan just started passing green things around. That's an adult weed. Right there. <laughs> adult <laughs> weed. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking nice. Just think um, about the time we we're hanging out and uh, Ryan convinced me to pierce my nose. Yeah. And, no, uh, no. So, wait. Give the proper background to this. We were hanging around in a parking lot. <laughs> well, that was a normal thing. That's what yeah, we yeah, would yeah. do. But, Friday night, we'd meet you up gotta, in a parking lot. I know it. You know <laughs> it. Christian don't know it. The listeners don't know it. You give a little bit of context. Yeah. So, way back when, this is probably around like I don't know, early '90s, probably around '91, '92. 
anyways, a regular thing every Friday night, whatever. We'd uh, meet up at a parking lot. We used to meet up at Friendlies and, and go to Friendlies until we were we were thrown out of there, no longer welcome there. So we had to take. Remember you shut the curtains on? Yes, yeah. <laughs> I think that was the last thing. I um. Because that was back when you could smoke in, in those places. So uh, I think I took Ryan's lighter and I lit the curtains on fire at Friendly's. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, we, in the whole restaurant. Yeah. We, we, we weren't welcome back in Friendly's anymore. Remember uh, when, uh, what was his name? Uh, Shane Marvell ran. Drove across the tables. <laughs> dude, we were, so, dude, we're, we're in Friendly's and there's this, like, table. It's like a family. Like, 10 people, there's some kind of celebration going on. I don't know what it was, birthday, graduation or something. 10, 12 people sitting down. Literally, the food just got delivered. Like, they, they put the last plate down, and we're leaving. And Shane Marvell turns around and looks at me. He goes, watch this. And he did this, like, weird thing where he, like, started jumping and, like, running like he was, like, shaking and stuff. And he ran, and he jumped on the table and slid across the whole table and spread, <laughs> like, oh, like, plates to the food flying everywhere on all of everyone. And he got up, and he would do this thing, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like that, and he, and he was doing this weird thing, and he just jumped and he ran out of the place. But like, he had like the element of surprise in his favor. Like, you know what I mean? People were so flabbergasted at what just happened, and he, he just fucking ran out, <laughs> fucking hysterical. <laughs> that was great. Uh, we were sitting. Uh, we were at the Phoenix in in um, Fairhaven, and I remember sitting there and I was watching, and, he, and he's pouring ketchup in his hand. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? And all, all of a sudden, he, he just smacks himself in the face so hard that he flew backwards out of his chair, fell on the ground. And he's like, why are you going to punch me in the face? Why did you punch me in the face? And the owner was like watching the whole thing. And, and, and the owner was all pissed off and came over and started like kicking him in the fucking head and shit. Like, <laughs> fucking stupid. I don't know. Just random flashbacks. I don't know. Just stupid shit. But, um, but yeah, so so Ryan, we were standing around in the parking lot, and uh, Ryan, um, this is early. Uh, was Ryan tattooing? He was no, still, this no. was before. Ryan this. Started, yeah, that's way before then. This is probably yeah. around 91, 92. Um, I wanted to pierce my ears. And this he didn't start tattooing too far after that, though. Well, probably a couple years after. Yeah, he started tattooing around like 94, I think. Out of my house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so. I once pierced my ears, and this girl I knew worked at uh, Claire's in the mall. She got like the uh, the piercing gun, and a whole bunch of those little starter studs. And uh, so we're hanging on the parking lot, like Builder Square in, in Dartmouth. And um, Ryan pierces my ears, and then Ryan wants to pierce my nose. And I'm like, I'm not piercing my nose. He's like, Come on, dude, let me pierce your nose. Let me pierce your nose. I'm like, Dude, I'm not piercing my nose. This was probably like around 91, 92, like before anyone was like when piercing your nose was like like still like like hardcore like just punk rock like you know. And, uh, and he's like, and I was like, if I pierce my nose, like uh, he was like, I, I, I'll pierce my belly button if you pier- if you let me pi- if, if you pierce my nose. Now I'm this like, is this is before like belly button <laughs> tattoos became the domain of like uh, uh, of uh, Godsmack um, fans, Godsmack fans and, and, and sorority girls, right? <laughs> so uh, so he pierces my nose, and then um, he's like, so I'm supposed to pierce his belly button, and then he's like, I'll just do it myself. I'll do it myself. <laughs> So, so it, this is tough without it uh, being like without the visual descriptions. But he he takes the gun and he's got to shoot. This is up. a gun. It's not it's not piercing needles. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a little is... plastic a little plastic gun that's absolutely not made for piercing <laughs> belly buttons. <laughs> it's made for piercing ears yeah. and ears only. Like you know, so and it barely worked at that problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he's got he's got like the gun and he, and he's holding it above <laughs> his stomach, trying to trying to like clenching his like above his belly button, trying to figure out wh- where to shoot it in. And then he blasts it in, and I don't know if you ever seen the starting studs that they use in those guns, but they have like at the end like a really, really like pointy arrow tip that once it's in, it's it not coming back, come out. back out. Almost like a fish hook, like a bob on a fish hook. <laughs> it's a bar. So he shoots it in. Now keep in mind these things are made to go through like whatever the thickness of your ear is, not of like whatever the thickness of, Two of, inches your, of, it, yeah. of your belly button yeah, is. Yeah. So obviously this thing does and not go straight through. Obviously it he gets, didn't just pinch like a little piece of skinny, like tried to do it yeah, through his yeah. fucking belly button. So run. it's now stuck in there. Not only is it stuck in the middle, it's also stuck in the gun. So he can't get it out of the gun. He He's running get, around this pocket lot, freaking out, the, freaking out. And all he sees is gun flapping on his stomach, like, like his gun is flapping. And he's been around for like 15 minutes yeah. with like the gun like Dude, What am I going to do? What am I going to do? He's like gonna freaking do? out like, it won't come out. It won't come out. <laughs> <laughs> he, he finally ended up ripping it out. But. Yeah. I know. Like. And then like a week or two later, it was so nasty and oh, infected. All infected and <laughs> fucked up. I remember, yeah, I remember fucking standing in 
my bathroom when I was a kid and pierced my nose, but with like a, just a fucking safety pin. <laughs> and then it was like stuck in. I was like, that's cool. And I just clipped the safety pin. <laughs> and I was like, I got to take that. That's fucking stupid. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it was fun, fun times. I got to uh, get a, a boy, Keith, on the, on the phone. Uh, here, hold on one second. Not Johnson. It's Keith from uh, New Jersey. I should have called Keith Johnson. Yeah, I was thinking that. Fuck. We'll do that next time. Oh. Hello? Oh. You hear me? Yeah, what's up, bro? Hey, what's up, man? Not much. Uh, we were uh, just doing that uh, little send-off for Ryan, so just talking about um, any fun times or standout, standout memories or just thoughts about them. Christian's here on the, on the, on the thing with us. And, uh, uh, Shane, an old uh, high school friend of ours, is, uh, is on here, too. Um, right. What's happening, man? This is Keith uh, from New Jersey, who um, probably saw he, one of the the smoke out uh, jackass crew of uh, on the on the uh, on the old Chopper Head DVDs with us, and uh, um, uh, ringleader of Limey Bastard Initiations and whatnot. <laughs> um, what's happening, man? Uh, just playing some ping pong in a garage. Not much. <laughs> it's a lot mellower nowadays. Yeah, a little mellow. You know, yeah. Um, it, it's weird. I really can't think anything off the cuff. You know, it's like yeah. there were so many things, and some a lot of it I'd already shared. I, yeah. No, man. I, I remember. I remember just like like the one time he just like he came he came down here with Melissa and Ryden, and, and they were just like hanging out. We went to the beach and like went up to the boardwalk, and uh, he, he was he was really uh like just like really into the boardwalk games where he just like kept giving them money because he wanted to win like a stupid prize and I like, kept on feeding the money, feeding the money. And my, my wife was all like, let me just buy the thing. And he just kept on like, ah, oh, I love <laughs> carnival games, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is kind of funny, but, um, I, mean, I don't know, man. I guess like the one time at the smoke out when, or, or, uh, actually I don't know where it was, but, uh, like something happened in a room and, all right, so you you want me to give an outline of that one? <laughs> so, so this is like this is like this is this was a smoke out. It was one of the old ones. Uh, this is when like phones, like texting, just kind of became a thing. Like it just started catching on. It's still when you were on a flip phone and you had to hit like for the for the B, you had to hit like number one twice or whatever. You know what I mean? And Ryan, who like Ryan was weird man because. He wasn't good with technology, but he was always like kind of up on technology. Christian just pulled out a flip phone that does that exact thing. Um, but um, yeah, it is a flip phone. What, like, what even model is that? Let me. Is that your actual phone? He's got two. He's got he's got this, and he's got fucking a lunch tray, dude. Like, um, LG, an LG flip phone. Wow. But um, so long long story short, Ryan was oh, we were calling him a homotextual because he was like so infatuated <laughs> with texting. He wasn't even like coming to the events, like he was just sitting in the room, sitting in the room. So uh we were in the hallway, we're like, We're gonna get this motherfucker and like we pulled a fucking fire extinguisher out and uh one of us them. kicked one yeah, one of us kicked in the door, <laughs> one of us smoked them. It's on the D V D, I don't know, whoever, but yeah, uh, it was like I had this room all by myself. So yeah. Like my private room away from like all the chaos, which was nice. Yeah. <laughs> Except we got brought to your room. Every day, like away from me. It's like, oh, this is nice all by myself. And Ryan's in there smoking a cigarette out the window. And someone kicks the door open and just smokes the whole place up freaking yeah. yellow. Yeah. And he's yeah. sitting there oh, that, covered in shit. And his beard. Yeah. It's like, oh. Dude, the freaking smoke alarms are going off. He's just chilling, smoking a cigarette. <laughs> he just like white shit. <laughs> so, like, so fucking, we get we break in. I fucking smoke out the whole room with a fucking fire extinguisher. Ryan's sitting there. He didn't even put out his cigarette. He's just still texting. <laughs> okay. dude. And so it's like what he said: the fire alarms are going off. They're they're evacuating the whole hotel. And so we're like, shit, we gotta go to like my room. So me, Keith, and Ryan are walking through the hotel. Ryan's white as a ghost, like just covered it's like in two inches of soda yeah, on yeah, everything from yeah. the extinguishers. So, so the whole room is smoked out, and then we're like walking back to my room, and Ryan's like, like, like nothing, it's not us, and he's leaving a footprint trail to the room. <laughs> oh, that's right, the 
footprints. And, and so we had to go back later and get key stuff out, and that's where the infamous farts fucking farts. <laughs> Romeo wrote farts. <laughs> Romeo, with Romeo wrote farts. Uh, what Dude, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to choke him. <laughs> I know. It's like the <laughs> only time you've been mad. I was I was just <laughs> telling was someone this story the other day, dude. It was so fucking funny because it's like literally the only time I've seen you mad. <laughs> You're, you're, uh, you're breaking up a little. But so, like, we got to get back in there and get key shit out of the room. And fucking, uh, you know, I, I think it was me, you, Ryan, and, and Bromeo or something. Were you there? Yeah, you, and there. Christian, yeah. And we're getting everything out of the room, and we're trying to get out before, like, you know, the hotel people come or whatever, cops or whatever. And fucking, and Bromeo's just drawing on the desk. And Keith looks down at what he's doing, and it just says farts. But with, like, three A's, it's like, farts. <laughs> like, like that. And Keith's like, what the fuck are you doing? We can go to jail. What a, I'm going to, like, we get in some shit. So there's a dead body, and you're going to write farts and, like, this and that. And, like, I don't know what the fuck was going on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bromeo is such a fucking nut. Uh, fuck. So stupid. It's like one of those things that was, you had to be there and see the whole context. Like, fucking. But farts. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, fucking. Farts. But yeah, dude, there's, there's a lot, man. Like, those, some of those times, man. Like, and it's cool that we got some of it on those, the old DVDs, like, to, to go back and watch. We didn't get it all, though, man. There was a lot nah. more fucking wild shit that, like, we, we didn't get. Yeah, the, <laughs> it was good times back then, man. But oh yeah, dude, totally. Well, fuck yeah, man. How's uh, how's things in Jersey? Good, man. Mellow, mellow. Just freaking hanging out. Like I said, playing a little pong. <laughs> <laughs> light my light my tiki torches in the yard. Yeah, kind of mellow. Getting kinda keeping mellow. the mosquitoes away. Yeah, kind of like hanging out. <laughs> I was actually going to go up to the beach a little bit, throw the fishing poles in the truck, and do a little fishing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Not, not the exciting piece, huh? Nah, nah. It's cool, but I do. Man, appreciate you coming out from Jersey for the for the send off the other day. Oh, hundred percent, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's nice seeing everybody, man. But. Absolutely. And we're gonna do a proper party. We'll let you know well ahead of time when once we get something kind of rolling and planned, and um, yeah, and do a, a proper send off. We're just waiting to get some get his ashes back and stuff, and do to do that. Yeah, stuff. I'm just. I'm. I, I mean, I'm just like proud to know him. You know, he's such a great dude. Yeah, duck suit. It was just cut so short, man. I wanted to, see, you know, spend more time and sucks, you know. Absolutely, it, man. I'm just, I'm just proud to know him, you know. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, and and and, you know, that's why we're doing this, dude. Just give him a, uh, a proper send off and uh, memorial. Absolutely, man. You know, and like I feel like half of this is just so someday his kid can listen to this and because we're not going to remember all this shit so like you know us, nah. us uh saying some shit like triggers another memory and this and that and and uh, yeah you know hopefully he can sit back at this and laugh news know his dad was a fucking good dude a smart dude but a fucking jackass and and, and you can be all those things you know what i mean like you don't have yeah. to be a serious dude and and nah. you can you can be serious when you need it and 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 uh and uh not take shit too seriously when you don't have to but, Absolutely. Well, fuck yeah, bro. Let me uh, let me call you uh, later or tomorrow. Some I'll let you go get fishing and stuff. We're gonna wrap, wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not jamming me up, man. I just I, I just I just can't like you know I can't just. I, can't I know, play. I know, I know. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But but fuck yeah, dude. Um, that was one of my favorite times too, man. Because like. Like literally, just remember that. Like he he didn't even flinch. He still was texting and smoking a cigarette, and he was like white as a fucking ghost, covered with whatever the shit is in a fire extinguisher. And he was just like, he was like all right, well, we gotta go. And he, he didn't even get pissed. He was just like laughing. And then it, it ruined all kind. Of, we ruined all kinds of shit that weekend, man. That was. I don't want to talk about some of it, but the, the yeah, <laughs> it was. It I looked like, like that hotel looked like Fallujah for a little bit. But yeah, man. Well, uh, we'll let you go. Wait, I, gotta, I, wait, I remember the one time I was driving down. I don't know which one it was. I was riding down with Christian, it was me and Christian, and you guys. There was like some kind of radio. You're like, turn on radio channel, blah blah blah. We turned it on, <laughs> and it's like it's like blistering hot wherever freaking state we were going through. I mean, it was like melting shit. And all of a sudden, it's Christian's phone number. 
saying that he's got an air conditioner for sale oh, for like 20 bitch. bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We used, we used to call like those hillbilly like fucking uh, swap <laughs> shops. <laughs> <laughs> we did like that. We had like 100 calls like in 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Ryan, we were calling those in and we were calling them. Uh, we, we gave Christian's number for the one and then Sonda's Uh-oh. number for uh, – because Sonda had a, a, has an irrational hatred of um, – what's the dude with the parrots? The fucking Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> and we, right, we called right, up about right. we called and said we were Sonder and we had Jimmy and we 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 bought any J- right. Jimmy Buffett paraphernalia no matter how small or big we buy whole collections give us a call oh we sold Sonder's motorcycle for two hundred bucks too his Triumph yeah. his, his Triumph chopper we got Triumph chopper five hundred like and so like Sonder had to keep his phone off the whole rest of the trip because he kept getting fucking calls about everything. But I remember that one specifically because we called you guys to tell you, and like right when you turned it on, Christian's like, "What the fuck?" Because you heard your phone number being read over the radio. <laughs> <laughs> like hundreds of calls. Down, it was the hottest. It was like 110 degrees. Though, going, so no. I'm selling an air conditioner for 25 bucks or yeah. something stupid. <laughs> it was like 20,000 BTUs. I don't know, like 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's an extra one. <laughs> So stupid. Uh, that was that was used to be one of the funnest parts of those 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 bike sh- events when we'd all go down because we would we would have like inter car warfare like with stink bombs and shit. Fucking, I remember putting one in Lucas's door jam, so it was like the surprise attack when he shut the door. Like he just came and got him later. And uh, when Keith took a remember, shit in like, the mop bucket at that gas station <laughs> while the dude was mopping. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't want to talk about that. He's going. <laughs> he's going fishing. <laughs> now you're you're, uh, you're cutting out though, bro. So I'll um, let's 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 get up this week though. All right, cool, dude. All right, man. I'll talk to you. All right, man. Later, brother. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. Funny shit, dude. There's all like there's gonna be so many fucking more stories. Like this is only scratch the surface, but just a little proper send off for our for our brother and uh and friend and and uh yeah. I don't know. Back when he used to do the intros, the ITI shows were great. <laughs> He'd be so pumped. I'm going to come up with the biggest diatribe. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. ridiculousness. We'd always have him intro us. He was like the hype man kind of yeah but he was like the other member of iti even though he didn't play anything he was just he just rolled with us to everything but he would come out and he'd have his sunglasses on and his cigarette like <laughs> when he wasn't straight edge and be like yeah up next is blah 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 and he said just whatever it'd go on for like 10 minutes him like introing us like we were like just just say whatever dude like however long it took like didn't matter what our time limit was or anything he would just just be up there talking shit the greatest uh, one though was uh was the sick of it all show when <laughs> after he introduced you he staged and <laughs> you bounced your head off a of breastless. You came up, your head was just split open, right right at the beginning of the set, split open, blood just started gushing down. I don't think you even had any idea. Finishes the set, plays the whole set, yeah, great blood all over his face, flying around. Yeah. <laughs> I I was pissed because I had to go to the emergency room and I missed the rest of the show. That's a good show. It was Mad Ball Sick but off, I think. Yeah, it was us, Madball, and Sick of It All. I got it on video. I think that was the first, first Madball show in this area. Could have been. Could have been. First or second. Yeah. I I don't know. I didn't see it. <laughs> it was good. It was good. <laughs> I saw our set on video. I, I I don't even think I had the whole show on video. I think I just had our set. They opened with negative approach, ready to fight. Did they? You would have liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Should have been there. Cir- uh, circle Jerks and Negative Approach are coming. Uh, April or something like that. And, uh, yeah. To, yeah. To yeah, the yeah, Paradise, paradise in Boston. So. That would um, be a good one. Speaking of videos, you get a whole bunch of videos of us running around back in the day. I don't know where they're doing the craziest shit. I don't. I don't know where they are. I gotta find them, <laughs> but I gotta find them before someone else yeah, does. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember the first time Ryan came to pick me up at, at night in my house. Prostitute hopped in his car. <laughs> Ryan. Th- oh, she thought Ryan was trying to. Pick yeah, him yeah, up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that's like fresh. That's when like so like that's right around the time of the the highway killings were still going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a that was a brave ass hooker. Yeah. Um, and uh, I remember me and Ryan went and stole some of the tape. Um, they used the uh, crime scene tape. They were snatching up from my house and dropping them up in your backyard. Yeah, <laughs> Taking <laughs> literally house, bringing them to mine. Literally. Yeah. Um, if anyone's interested, look up New Bedford Highway Killer. There was a serial killer in our area when we were when we were young, and. Um, they were picking him up at he was picking him up at Shane's house and dropping him <laughs> off in my house, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Fucked up. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun time. Then if you drove over to my house and your doors weren't locked, prostitute would just hop in your car. 
you slow down to grab Sheen. You <laughs> never knew who else was going to jump in. <laughs> oh, fuck. My father's bar is right up the street, too. Uh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> but I grew, that's where I grew up. Like, I grew up hanging out there. But, but yeah, man. So, I don't know. Dan, you got anything you want to add uh, to the fray? Just uh, get close to the mic, you know? A lot of these stories that you heard today, uh, stories I heard Ryan and, and Truth telling here at the tattoo shop. And, man, I, I wasn't there for the for the actual stuff that was being told, but just listening to Ryan tell it was like his laugh. You couldn't not laugh if he was yeah. laughing. You no, couldn't have a straight face. He'd tell these stories, man, and he was just like reliving it all over again, and we'd be cracking up in here, and we'll really miss him. Yeah. And the stories and everything will go on forever, you know? Listen to this. Yeah. I remember mean, the stories, the good times, and just him telling the stories were the funniest shit, man. We, we'd be in here cracking up. I know. He's telling all those stories, like the uh, the tarantula one, I've heard that yeah. one's great. That voice that he does, you got to you gotta put like a clip of that on here I somehow do. because I've heard it many times and it is fucking hilarious. He was a funny-ass dude and he was a solid-ass dude and like True said, they don't make him like that anymore. Definitely the last of a dying breed. And, uh, you know, they don't make them like that anymore. That's all I could say. Yeah. We're going to miss them, though, for sure. I think that's probably, like, a good send-off, man. Like, I don't even think we need could even say anything else to add to that, man. Other than, you know, he, he, he had a lot, of, a lot of laughs, a lot of loves for the shit he cared about, again, which was his family, his friends, brothers, especially, you know, his son above, above and beyond. And... Uh, and uh, you know, and you know, said music and fucking tattooing and fucking just having good times, man, and living living life. You know, he lived he didn't he didn't live long, but he he lived more than one life. He he lived more than most yeah. eighty year olds. He lived he lived a lot more yeah. than a lot of you dusty motherfuckers <laughs> out there ever could even imagine living. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I I worked in the room right next to him forever, and he talked about his son every day to every customer that came in here and he was super proud of him and his music that he does i i heard the stories and i never got sick listening to those stories either because yeah. he was a really proud father and he loved his son to death and his father he was proud of his father i heard stories about his pops all the time yeah and uh you know truth and ryan a little bit older than me but and we didn't know each other as long as uh you know, Josh and Ryan knew each other, and but I feel like if I was around then, I would have been right there with you guys. Oh, absolutely, chilling, you absolutely, know what I mean? absolutely. And we hit it off immediately when I started coming in here. I never felt more welcome at any other place that I've worked in my life. And, uh, you know, right right when I started working here, some crazy shit happened. I'm not even going to say <laughs> it, you know what I mean? There was a car that got hit in the parking lot. It was wild. And I was like, I'm fucking right at home. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm right at home. Yeah. And, and you know, we always seen eye to eye. We never had a problem. Always got along great. Absolutely, so, man. He will be missed. 100%. Uh, yeah. I mean, fucking Ryan, bro, we love you. Fucking wherever you're at, fucking... The big Hope D you're still the, laughing, yeah, laughing at us being fucking the big DMT trip in the sky, <laughs> big bro. Big DMT trip Enjoy in the sky. Yeah. Well, I can't, you know, yeah. we'll be there with you someday. One hundred percent. Anyone else gonna say? I don't even know what to fucking say, dude. This is fucking weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's just uh, <clears throat> he was a big brother to me, man. Uh, you know, like I didn't really have a family growing up, and uh, I met you two fuckers, and like you guys became like instantly like real family, and. uh she had so many just amazing fucking memories, and it's like you can't even summarize them up. But uh, I mean, thirty years of just doing the most stupid, ridiculous stuff, and just never got old, you know. Uh, he he was just he was the you no matter what, you know. So you needed someone to just go on, just cause chaos, or just laugh your asses off. He was there. You needed someone to have your back. He was there. You needed someone to just talk to. He was there. I mean. He was as good of a friend you could ever, ever ask for, you know? And uh, like everybody thinks the same thing. I've never met a, everybody during all this where we're getting all emotional and talking. Pretty much has the same exact thing to say about him. He's just, just a fucking great dude, you know? He had a great heart and uh, was one of the most fun times you could ever imagine. Yeah. 
you know, and people throw around the term like, oh, that dude or that girl is my ride or die. Like, Ryan would be at death's door sometimes. And, like, you'd be like, yeah, I got to do some fucking shit. He'd be like, I- I'll roll. I got- yeah, I'm going to roll. And I'm like, no, nah, dude, you're not. Like, you can't. Like, I- no. Like, you know what I mean? But he was, he was, you know, he'd be the first one to try and jump in with you if you had to go handle something. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, even on days where he wasn't feeling good, he'd be like, he's like, oh, come get me. Well, he's like, I'll roll with you. And I'm like, oh, and then, I don't <laughs> you-, you fucking rest, bro. You know what I mean? Like, but that was the type of dude he was, man. And, uh. If he loved you, like, he, it was 100%, you know, and, uh, yeah, and he was all in, whatever it was. So, big respect to Ryan, big respect to his family, um, to his son, to his, you know, especially his parents. I, I can't imagine. His parents are cool as fuck, I and mean, I can't imagine what it's like to lose a kid and uh, or outlive a kid. And uh, big respect to Jen, who held him down, especially yeah, the last couple of years. Respect to Jen, definitely. Jen and Maddie, um, yeah. you know. She, and, took, she took good care of him and made sure he was all right for the, for, you know, in the last couple of years or so. It was tough. I couldn't imagine having to, you know, take care of someone like that. And, you know, Ryan, they were good together. And uh, Jen, Jen gets a lot of respect from everybody over here. Yeah. And, uh, you know. I know there's a lot of people that, you know, should be on this. This kind of, we just threw this together quick because want to do it before. I don't know. Not that memories are ever going to fade, but while we're, you know, I don't know. Maybe this helps even selfish. This helps us fucking, you know what I mean? Helps to, me, to, yeah. Yeah, oh, just man. talk about this and Yo, be able to laugh yeah. about shit rather than be sad about shit all the time. Um, there's plenty of people from the old days and from recent that, might want to chime in. We can always do another one. Um, you know, we got to get Ronnie on here. We got to get Jay Medeiros on here. We got to get, uh, you know, like some dudes from the old, like DuPont and like uh, some of the old friends and stuff. But we just threw this together wicked quick. And, it's a uh, permanent record. Permanent, permanent record. Permanent record of what a real, real ass dude Ryan was. Everybody needs to know it. Yeah. And, uh, and take some lessons from this if you're a fake fucking motherfucker, dude. Like, you know. Live, live right. You know what I mean? Even if living right is living wrong, just live right at living wrong, and, uh, and, and, and you'll be surrounded by good people. <laughs> we used to joke all the time back in the day that when we die, we, we ain't going to heaven. We're all going to hell, and we're going to take over when we get there. Yeah, so yeah. Ryan, Ryan just warming it up for us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nah, yeah. This is some fucking crazy shit, man. I don't know. You know, I'm jealous that motherfucker knows the answers to all the shit that we all wonder about now. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's laughing. He's like, because he knows, he knows what all the shit's going on. But, uh, but fuck yeah, man, Ryan, we'll we'll always miss you, and uh, you always be with us. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll throw it in at that. We love you, Ryan. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you Check one out of my Tyler Childers. That's gu- all I'm guilty saying. pleasures, yeah. and I'm I'm gonna get bashed for this, but I love fucking Kesha. <laughs> Kesha, wait, yeah. wait, Kesha. wait a minute! You better give him shit if you're giving me shit. I don't know. Well, I mean, I mean, well, I mean let's let just let's just set the mood, right? Like, no, 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 no. Let's analyze. Let's analyze. Wait, wait, stop, stop. Are you talking about her personally or her music? Like the music, like naked pictures of her or music? She's hot as fuck, and I think she'd be an amazing fucking roll in the hay. And I fucking like her music. I really do, man. So, yeah, yeah. So, so, so. Can I say something? Sing a song. I don't even know uh, the song. Like, okay, yeah, I, don't know. I don't know either. No, I no, just, no, don't just, play it. Don't play it. Don't play it. Her it's heart it. beats to the beat of a drum. <laughs> oh, it's a shame that you came here with someone. <laughs> and he's I mean, not drinking. I just so Let me just say, <laughs> sounds fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, I so did a wicked good job. You're, you, you got some alone time, yeah. Right, so, so dude, so, not even so, alone. I'll fucking so, make my chick listen to that. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So Jen's like, like doing yoga and all that yeah. shit. You're in the bathroom. You put on a fucking you. You put the the Kesha CD in. <laughs> or, or you, you, you play it on your little oh, no, Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, no. No, no, and no. in the shower, yeah. And like that's that's dude, what you jam. I fucking dude, I dig that's, it, man. That's what the fuck you jam, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Fucking hell. I don't even wow. care. I don't, I don't even care. know what it is. So I, it, I really I like, heard it. It's like, like, pop, I'm just trying to set the fucking like mood. Yeah. It's just like, uh, like, it's like Britney Spears. Yeah, yeah basically. No shit, no? Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah. My first initial thing was like, oh, she looks like she'd be fun. But then I was like, hey, this song's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, no shit, huh? Yeah. Check it out. Good for you. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll burn your CD. <laughs> so, 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 so that's a perfect segue. Fuck. 
Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, makes banking faster and easier. Like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can. In the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank and a member of DIC. If you're in business, you probably have a website. But can your site handle your growth? How many visitors before your site slows down or crashes? What about storage and data security? From web hosting to virtual servers, Pair Networks provides the online infrastructure you need to start, grow, and flourish. When it comes to security and updates, don't worry, we've got you covered. Our 24-7 U.S.-based customer support is the best in the industry. No frustrating chatbots are sitting on hold for hours. Check out Pair.com today to learn more. That's P-A-I-R dot com. Ever tried reading while jogging, cooking, or even juggling flaming torches? Yeah, doesn't end well. But with Audiobooks.com, you can conquer books without the circus act. Dive into over 450,000 titles, including more than 10,000 free ones. Get hooked on a bestseller, find your next obsession, or finally read that classic you've been avoiding since high school. And here's the inside scoop. Sign up today for a free 30-day trial and snag your first three audiobooks on the house. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E.